The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 153. My name is Gav. Oh, I am my here name to is Dan. podcast with Dan. Just... We are AI. Stop. We are not real. No. My name is Gav. This is Dan. We are your hosts. We are your we are your sailors on the ship of horror movies and things. You're all little passengers looking out the window, and we're going to sail down the ocean of movies. Yes. Semen. Semen everywhere. There we go. We've already done it, as usual. How are you? Very well, my friend. How How are you? Jolly, jolly well. As us, jolly in, Roger. as us English might say. Jolly good there, old chap. Jolly good. Jolly good. Jolly good, old chap. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm very good, thank you. I'm excited because, as 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 is the case with every three episodes, I know. You know it's a it's a time for another pa 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 patron. So talking of being British, we've got a couple of very British directors. Every time, every time we do the patron thing, I go, oh yeah, I'll find that little thing we did. We actually actually put music to and everything. The, the little I then can't ever find the. No, because I never bit. I never think of it until we do this. Yeah, that's why we but make yeah, it up every time. Being, Talking of being British, we are we have had picked by our patron uh, two movies directed by uh, some very British brothers. Uh, so our patron, the crown for this episode, the Queen, the Queen belongs to Jamie, Jamie Jenkins, Jamie J Salmons. She goes by many names. Queen Jamie, we shall call her. Um, thank you very much, Jamie, for uh, being a patron. And yes, your reward is this episode. Here it is on a tray for you. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's quite funny. I was surprised when you told me these movies because I'd kind of forgot. Well, I didn't know it was a sequel and I'd kind of forgotten about the first movie, but we will go into them uh, nearer the time. Yes, but to reveal what she has selected for us to discuss, we are selecting the Ford Brothers directed and cinematography written, etc. I think possibly fairly unknown and under the radar. For some. The, the four, oh, what the movies or the brothers? The movies. Yeah, yeah. Some people. I mean, Sarah they never are, heard of. They are well known in, um, like independent and guerrilla filmmaking type, and, and probably a real zombie genre fans. Uh, and they did well at Fright Fest as well, um, which is where I believe they were both um, premiered yeah, as well. I, I saw the premiere of the first one at Fright Fest. Let's let's not tease our listeners any longer. I will reveal what we're watching. They can know because they can about. look at their phones. Oh yeah, fuck. We're going to be reviewing and looking at The Dead in 2010. Dead. Yep. And The Dead Two, <laughs> India. The Dead 2, India. Let's just throw that in there. The Dead 2, India, uh, from 2013, directed by the Ford Brothers. Sounds um, like a really bad train you don't want to get on. The Dead 2, India? Yeah. Yeah. Like that ghost train from the last episode. Yeah, don't you get, get on it, because you're not going to get there. It's just going to go off into the ether. Uh, but the interesting thing about these two, and we'll get into it, 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 these two movies, isn't so much the films themselves, which are well made for, uh, in many ways, for the budget. Ja- Jamie's at the moment going, well, what the fuck you could talk about then? But the good, the interesting thing about them is the stories behind them. Um, so, which, unfortunately, sorry to cut you off, go back onto in a second. Unfortunately, when that is the case, and we still have to look at these movies, and quite often, audiences, non e yeah, nine percent of the time, it's only us one percent. Film nerds, geeks, lovers, makers um, uh, look up stuff like this, or or watch the BTS on the DVDs, which you, this was originally on of these things. Otherwise, it gets overshadowed, and you look at every film the same, which you should. 
But unfortunately, some films, if you know the backstory, you could, if you went back to watch the film, or you knew the backstory before you watched the film, which is the case actually in uh, Fright Fest, um, I think, they yeah. showed that. Uh, possibly. Maybe not. Maybe it was on DVD, which I bought. But um, uh, you get to more appreciate the film. But but carry on what you're saying to explain. No, I, I was going to say, so, um, I mean, we won't go into all the details now, but... Um that basically they had a tough time because they shot on location in West Africa for the first one and on location in India for the second one uh, on very tight budgets, all guerrilla sort of independent filmmaking style and encountered a whole host of problems, disease, corruption, um, muggings and stuff. Stuff we'll get into. We're, we're so to. it's rare that I would say it, but I would actually say um, for these two movies, if you've not seen them, look into the backstory there's even a book that the brothers wrote which we'll talk about again in a moment properly um about the stuff that went on because sometimes when you understand much like um uh sorcerer although that was a fantastic film uh, once i learned all the stuff that went on behind the scenes that elevated that movie even more and, and things like texas chainsaw evil dead once you start knowing the, the original evil dead and the original texas obviously once you know the shit blood and tears that went on behind the scenes you kind of have an appreciation even more for those movies so it slightly elevates yeah. them yep. and the same for me with okay. these two um, because the plots are fairly standard and they're fairly standard zombie movies but when you know how hard it was to make them you do kind of appreciate oh shit they, these guys actually really wanted to make this you know um, so so yeah but yeah, that's what we're covering Gav yes we are um... Any, thoughts on that before we talk about it? No, because we're going to get on to it. Um, we're we're we getting are. into the films uh, at the time. I'm gonna, but I'll be putting having my um, filmmaker's hat on um, because uh, I have a lot to say uh, about stuff. And I'll be having my zombie hat on because I'm a zombie. Mm. Um, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Have you seen anything cool? Well, uh, very quickly, started potty training this weekend. So uh, have, you never, have you never used a toilet before? never done it so how so, is your potty training going finally at big boy nappies and i'm into big boy pants a couple of accidents here and there did alice know yeah. when you first said would you like to go out with me did, did, that she'd be you know training you to use the toilet no it's taken her 13 years i know some women need to <laughs> learn this about men don't they <laughs> Can you imagine that? Imagine, imagine that. Uh, I, I mean, it's probably out there. To look, be look, that could be a metaphor for some men and how useless they are, to be honest with you, and what women have to part with. Yeah, yeah. But no, um, I, I joke. Um, my uh, That's the main thing in my life at the moment is, is that the children have decided they want to go potter training, which is great that they've decided it rather than us sort of, sort of trying to make them do it. Other than that, all fine and dandy. And I finally had a cinema trip for the first time in months and months and months and months. Saw the same film you did. Is so that, we can. Has we... anyone ever called you Dandy? Uh, I don't think so. All right, Dandy? Yeah. Well, fine, thanks. Uh, Pandy? Gav- Gavacious. What? Uh, Gavatron. The Gavatron. I'm going to um, But no, uh, I got out to the cinema on a rare day off um i know and hang on ladies and gentlemen everybody join if you're not don't do it if you're driving it's dangerous but little golf clap because dan obviously is a father with young children and going to the cinema is quite a luxury people without children or who have children have grown up uh, uh or not grown up but mine like you know i have ch- opportunities to go dan doesn't try, try so to a hold golf down a full-time job um yeah and, and just that yes yeah, yeah, and, so. and uh, you're at the stage you're so young though uh, if you do get a moment it'd be nice to hang out with the other half or actually get some sleep you yeah. know so um so that's why it's a little golf clap but audience Thank members you. please don't clap if you're driving a car or operating machinery or driving a hel- try flying a helicopter that's yeah it's operating machinery because some of our listeners probably do uh but yeah it's the same same movie that you saw listeners if there is any pilots out there please let us know bloody hell gav what did we both see uh separately but we did see ghostbusters not afterlife what's it called frozen empire empire strikes back yeah ghostbusters um, frozen let it go so um <clears throat> spoiler free um yes we will because it's still still out at theaters cinemas. Uh, and and your thoughts on a, a, a ghostbuster movie of the franchise the uh, fifth i think one two three four oh, five six, yeah. six if you can uh, do no, the fifth, fifth. fifth yes fifth fifth um but it's kind of technically the fourth 
in the in. kind of continuation of the same actors, but there's yeah. one spin-off, so to speak, which is 2017. Yeah. Um, do you want, sh- shall I go first? Yeah, yeah, you do you. Yeah, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't as good as the last one. It wasn't as good as Afterlife. Afterlife had the emotional punch... Um, it put and it, it hit all the, the nostalgia note strings, which I know some people are like, oh yeah, but it was supposed. To, but it, I don't care. I went with it. I cried at the end. I loved Afterlife. This one wasn't that. Um, I still had a lot of fun with it. What I did like about this one, though, and this is the nerd in me, which might go over some people's heads, but I really liked that there were a lot of Easter eggs to um, the real Ghostbusters. Uh, as in the the, um, the cartoon, uh, uniforms, characters, l- hairstyles, even sort of little bits, the names and equipment and things like that. Some slime, the way uh, the way some slime is dripping through something. It's too nerdy to talk about, but there was a lot of callbacks to that and the toy line as well, which I liked. Um, and then there was like some random Easter eggs, like there's a, a whole christine easter egg and i was like wow wow okay great also man crush paul rudd love him love everything he does so he's great in it it's always great to see bill dan and ernie hudson is looking fantastic for 78 i sent you that picture room the other day he is looking fantastic for a 78 year old man well, it's pretty well, he's only six years younger than my dad and my dad's not look like him <laughs> uh, he's hench, very hench looking, young looking man for a 78 year old. Um, but yeah, and the biggest critiques I've seen have been people saying, oh, there's too many characters in it. But for me, that's a problem for the TikTok generation who've got a very short attention span and want things to be A to B in 10 seconds flat. Whereas I come from the old school. You know, I'd love to see some of these TikTokers watch a film like Sorcerer or something where there's multiple characters intertwined in a story that you have to sit down for two and a half hours for. It, I agree with what some of what you said. It isn't going to be one that is like a classic for years to come. Still fun, though. Fun to see the Ghostbusters. Loved, loved seeing some different stuff. Like, really loved the car chase through New York. Stuff that you never saw in the first one. Um, and... Yeah, I can't really talk about too much about it without spoiling it, obviously. But, oh, I love the baddie. I thought the baddie looked great. I loved that there was quite a lot of... Well, not quite a lot, but there was some practical effects in it as well. The carrier bag, the the, the garbage bag was all practical. Um, having read some of the facts afterwards. With that, and again, that's not a spoiler. You don't know what that means unless you go and watch it. I can't um, remember what that means and I've seen it. All right. uh, yeah, and I loved um, the whole... Uh, Winston's uh, secret business thing that he's got going on as well. Really loved all of that. I need to watch um, it again. <laughs> oh dear, I can't remember that now. Uh, yeah, um, Your turn. Uh, uh, the Easter eggs kind of went over my head because that's me. Um, I did feel there's quite a lot going on. Uh, 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 really, I think they kind of pulled it back a bit and made it a little bit more simpler. I think. Um, but I did enjoy it. I kind of... It's a shame, though, that you kind of had this big evil thing in the, the Frozen. It's not. It's in the trailer, so I'm not spoiling it. Eyes comes up and that sort of thing. I would kind of want that more at the beginning of the film, and that's the threat. Or, or, do you know what I mean? And that's their main goal. Yeah. Something like that. Right? It, it just kind of... It's here and there and there. Um, it was fine, though. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It was fine. As the, I, I did laugh a little bit here and there. Um, I would watch it again if it was on Netflix. Um... I don't know if I'll get it for my collection immediately. I might pick it up at some point. Um, it's fine. Yeah, it didn't have the after. The, it didn't have the whole after. No, I, thing. I agree with everything you said. Yeah, yeah, but there was definitely some good stuff in it, um, and it's definitely worth a watch. And for me, as soon as you hear that <laughs> on the big screen, it's, you know, that's that's the thing. I'm gonna. I enjoyed going to watch it because I went to watch a Ghostbusters movie and thing, and it's just the name Ghostbusters. It's such it's a weird a childish great. name, but it came from my childhood. So for me, it is actually a part of my DNA. Do you know what I mean? With some things they are. Uh, Rambo, Ghostbusters, there's a lot of this shit. It's just Arnold Schwarzenegger. So many things which are part of me and how I've grown up as a human. Um, so if I get a chance to go to the cinema to relive a bit of that fun. And I took my, all my three kids to the new cinema in our town. And there's not been a cinema town since I went to watch Oxpussy with my dad. Um, 
and they've just got a new cinema so it's great to go support like the new cinema and watch it there um so yeah it's fun it's if you like ghostbusters well why wouldn't you watch it yeah and if you like ghostbusters you're gonna like it and what this one did does do more than the first than the last one is it's in new york um for the whole movie rather than out you know in a little bit of town out out of new york so it feels a bit more ghostbuster yeah, yeah, in that you, respect you've got a firehouse yeah i got the firehouse and yeah, so, you it, know. it really ties in one and two um to, to this one in fact they mentioned the events of two they're like oh remember the statue of liberty yeah uh, some things didn't like uh walter peck i don't think should have been in it that really that was really forced um mm, and I, know what you mean. I don't like the woman in it the paul um, rudd's the, the mum paul rudd's yeah. bottom, uh, she, i don't like her at all she's there's nothing about her which makes me go can't wait to see her i i literally don't like her do you know but the kids I mean? are good. Normally the, the kids, kids are annoying, are but the no, kids the, are the good. The kids are cool. It? Paul Rudd's great. She's really badly cast, I think. And I loved all the gadgets, you know, and the drone traps, which this is all stuff that's in the trailers, you know, the drone yeah. trap and the, the little car trap. It's, it's fine, but I think we live in the world, obviously, now of <clears throat> streaming. So, uh, like Sarah, mm. she didn't bother going to watch it in the cinema. Sarah fucking loves Ghostbusters. She will go, okay, cool, I'll watch it when it comes on Netflix. Um, and I think yeah. some people will, because afterlife was bringing all that lot back from we've not seen since the eight uh, that was the first late one, 80s it? um early 90s 90s whatever it goes past two was as late 80s wasn't it 89 i think yeah uh, uh yeah 89 the second one i think so i think that brought everyone to cinema because we wanted to see that and have that emotional pull and we all had it most of us um so you know yeah um this time around and if they do a third one which they probably will yeah it would be the same amount going again it won't be and it'll be the same film again it won't be anything it won't be reinventing the wheel uh, and we'll just get that n- nostalgia boost in our brains which makes us go yeah what's nice is it didn't feel like and the same with Afterlife it didn't feel like they were setting up another one um, it just kind of ended and that was that yeah you got to remember like uh, uh, I don't know it could be like we're starting a new trilogy or new whatever but it was really only that first ghost was what one and two excuse me um so it would be ultimately the cinema box office takings if they do another one but to be fair hollywood's in a bit of a fuck state right now anyway so i don't know <laughs> brilliant it is uh speaking of ghosts being an oh, i was gonna say talking to me in a fuck state but um go on speak, well, talk I was gonna say, speaking of ghosts and spooky things um i rewatched uh truth seekers on amazon prime which is nick frost and simon peck's production company's uh, show which was cancelled after one season much to dismay from Nick Frost um, have you seen it? I watched that right at the beginning of the pandemic well, uh, um, check it out again um, it's, I don't remember it to be honest watch it again, I think yeah because we're in that pandemic mode and we were just binging so much stuff, um, I was drunk a lot <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I hadn't I gave up drinking because I think that would have I was like the world's ending I think that would have been the end of my mental state if uh, for real if I'd have been drinking so um, anyway um, check that out again listeners if you've not seen it do check it out it's a British comedy and I really like the simplicity of it I'm kind of gutted there's not a second one um, yeah I kind of like it um, I, I haven't really got much more to say about it it's a comedy show and Nick Frost is like a TV sort of repairman type sort of thing goes around in a van no he's setting up a broadband sorry and he goes around in a van with this other guy and just the first house they go to it's all sort of spooky but it's just the way it's shot it's it's a real horror show without having too much horror but there's a lot of um strange uh high strangeness in it so to speak um yeah. lots of those sorts of things like the um what's the radio tone in it the oh, sarah's killing me now because i'm not saying it i can't remember oh you mean like the uh, number towers yeah the yorkshire no what's it called i can't even remember what it's called anyway that's in there for quite a lot for the first episode but please check it out listeners if you haven't um it's truth a sh- seekers it's yeah true seekers it's free on amazon prime because it's original of theirs but obviously it didn't get the viewership at the time which is weird because it wasn't locked down it should have done um but do check it out I, that's my recommendation and, and you could binge it in a night if you wanted to be honest it's only about six episodes if I remember rightly it's not long um, and it's got a nice real horror edge and it's got that real British comedy so if you want that um, it should have been like three series seasons do you know what I mean series Um, Mm. the the, the English way is actually two isn't it I think is it two or three it's two is like the classic way for English episode seasons yeah Ricky Ricky Gervais 40 Towers The Office yeah anyway two and done 
Yeah. They're like me in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not bad, though. It's not bad. Two, or are you two, talking about children? I'm not sure. Two, no, I'm talking about two pumps and a squirt. <laughs> oh, that's not that good. I thought it meant twice. Yeah, twice in one go, night. The pumps go on for a good 45 seconds each. Well, so. you're, you're saying it kind of as individual pumps, like one, two. One, two, buckle my shoe is a different is a metaphor Christ. for you. When you say, Alice, let's go upstairs, I want to buckle my shoe, she well, knows that, She knows what's up. Look, she knows what to, time it is, Dandy. Talking, doesn't talking, she? Of, talking of pumps and a squirt, I know you're in fucking itching. Fucking Dandy, to, the fucking one pump squirter. <laughs> listen, I know you're itching to talk about him, so talking of two pumps and a squirt, get it off your chest. You want to talk about uh, the bad boy. Oh uh, my God, what a segue. He did he himself. Um, right, I was di- right, which I've actually, been I've been dropping jokes about this for the last four episodes, and then you messaged me frantically about a week ago saying, "Have you not heard?" And I was like, "Dude, like, I've been following the story for about three months." You were like, "I am really." You went down a big P Diddy rabbit hole, didn't you? I went. I went really fucking addicted to Sarah's nose. I'm like with this because I all of a sudden message say, "I'm well into Colombo. I fucking can't get over Colombo," and I'm just like, you know. Um, I just went on I, I mission and said do you know about P. Diddy he's like fucking I, Epstein I was about to say Einstein not Einstein Epstein and uh, I went he's on like Frankenstein <laughs> um, well toss well, uh, no I was going to say something there. <laughs> I can't say what are you going to say oh, oh, I'm going to say I'm going to stop the recording and tell you That's anyway we're back Dan well, that was a good joke huh uh, that was quick thinking. Quick thinking. It was quick thinking. But just can't say that. No, just can't say that. Anyway, yeah, he did he. I was DJing the other night, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But I was DJing, and I, I was just like, queuing up songs. But what happens when I DJ is I actually I'll talk about it very quickly now. Did two parties recently. First thing I did a girl's 18th birthday party, which is James Bond themed. Two nights later, I did a lad's 24th in a in a pub. Um, yeah. In a pub. It was a bit of a pub and it could be a bit of a rough area, that sort of thing. And I played it on New Year's Eve, actually. It's fine. They're all sort of the same locals that go down there. It, did get, it didn't get rowdy, but at one point, there was these two kids. They must be about both 15. Their other mate's 15. They're right just in front of my decks. Two of them are holding each other's arms. They're a third bloke in the middle, laying down, and they're just pushing him up so he's headbutting the ceiling. Pretty much, bang, bang. Then falling down. Then they're wrestling in front of me, and everyone's just laughing. Their dad's there, and they're all just laughing. Everyone's just really fucking drunk. The woman that employed me to do it is her son's twenty-four. She must only be about probably younger than me. Um, five times she fell into my table, into my deck, so I pushed her away. Five times I'm like literally pushing her with both my hands away from me, and I said, "Can you just fall over that way, yeah?" I, uh, I had a half pint of beer spilt just in front of my decks. My decks are not uh, not cheap. They are expensive. All my shit is mm. expensive. It's like, right, guys, fucking sort this out. So they started doing that for me. So, fuck's sake. And then um, the lady, she was so drunk. Then she ended I'm glad she paid me first because she's outside just puking her guts up everywhere. Just fucking everywhere. I was stepping through vomit, taking all my de- stuff out after midnight. Anyway, uh, the girl's 18th, though. Fucking loved it. I love DJing for a uh, lady's fifth, uh, 18th birthday party. It's They just want to have fun and dance from the moment i was working my ass off from as soon as i got on there these girls all these little tight dresses and shit all just fucking dance not something i'm like fucking hell, i've got to go for this straight away for four so hours it, non-stop i'm just like dance music for bum, bum, so bum, it's bum, true bum. it's true what cindy dorper said then yeah i even played girls just want to have fun because i, I was they for. lost their minds oh yeah that. i was doing village people everything but what i do is i give people this is gonna segue back to where we're going what i do is i give people uh, a spotify playlist give me this whole playlist and i'll take all your songs and I'll play your songs for you and I'll mash it all up and that's what I do I do all sorts um, so Saturday night a lot of the times though I'm playing songs I've never even heard and I'm mixing them in not knowing what's going to happen to the song it's the first time I've ever heard a song and I'm just mixing it because I can just do that because I know what I'm doing I've been DJing for like 25 years I worked out so um I'm queuing up a song and it starts off with Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy and I was like oh, oh my god dear me a girl a lady, I should say, called El Eli, Elik, Eli, Ellis. I don't know. I know, I know Elise. The song. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a pretty and, catchy little number. But. And I was like, oh, she must be sitting at home, waking up every morning, going, what? Don't <laughs> even say that. Hopefully, not feeling like Peter Diddy. But she must be waking up every morning, going, oh, I wish I had. Can we do an yeah. edit? Nope, that song's out there. To start tough. Waking up in the morning, feeling like P. Diddy. Now, we don't know. We're not. 
don't sue us, Pete Diddy. I know you're an avid listener of this. Um, well, you're sitting there shitting yourself right now, listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. Not because we're scary, because you're scared that you're going to be... He is uh, connected, though. Apparently, he can have people taken out. Of course. Um, everyone likes to say, you know, this, this is what you get from being the, on the streets. I never, I've never... Pete Diddy's music, it's all right. It's nothing amazing. There's a couple of tracks are all right. It's a bit pop-friendly stuff, but he's a businessman and an entrepreneur from the streets. He was never a gangster, though. He... No, he, he must have gained it because he doesn't come across like that. He's bought, he's bought the muscle and the power. He's just used pa- money. So, um, yeah. but he must have... He is like a billionaire, apparently. Hmm. Because obviously he's like a businessman, so he's an entrepreneur. So he's a, a lot of the rappers, it's the ones which are like 50 Cent, who's trying to take him down and bringing out a documentary. Yeah. Um, a lot of those guys, like 50 Cent, the ones that are straight away like, I'm getting a, a bottle of water named after me and I'm getting a clothing brand, I've started. They're, they're the ones, a jewellery brand. That's normally those three. That's what you normally do. A drink clothing and uh, jewelry you know yeah. and then you start doing it and those rappers are the ones we still see now because they're in the business so much and in the press so much because they got so much fucking money opposed to red man do you know what i mean um yeah. so example but yes it, talk to me about p diddy but but obviously I mean, we don't know anything he might yeah. be an innocent person but i fucking doubt it well i mean allegedly you know we're talking r kelly levels of uh, abuse um of power um and abuse of people why, um, why can't you be happy with with what you have why can not you take your money and be creative and help people do stuff why can't you be a nice person why do you have to like, be a cunt again all this is speculative none of this is he we- may not be a cunt but he's had his houses raided and he has been it's been rumored that he has been bribing people by making blokes mainly um perform sex acts or him perform sex acts on them uh, and videoing it and then saying if you ever tell anybody about this with these videos will go out i've heard a sex tape of his of him with another guy well it, but that's um, only uh, but that's, i heard that sort of thing as well but you can't um it's it's sound that's no proof at all yeah so. and if you if you look at some of his lyrics now and go back and look at them it's almost like if this is true he's he was just like jimmy savile he's he was hinting at it all you know all the way through but again this is all still hot on the on the press it's not and even hot. we're not saying he is but yeah but but yeah, he's he's gone into hiding on his one of his islands he owns, and Everything. his houses are being uh, raided, and lots of rappers are coming well, forward. There was obviously Method the Method Man, um, uh, Usher said he was propositioned when he was younger. Just, the Justin videos Bieber, of Justin Bieber, Bieber, Bieber look Bieber, yeah. really sketchy. Those videos when um, he's just the way he is so uncomfortable with these people. They look his so modus uncomfortable. His modus operandi was apparently to see an up-and-coming young artist have them move into his house for a few months Why? to work to work on an album using air quotation marks uh, or work on music. Well, Dr. But, Dre didn't do this. No, Dr. Dre did not do this at all. Dr. Dre would, yeah, take someone on and go, right, I can fucking, we can work, brilliant, but he didn't, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. Most rappers, 80, 90% of rappers are staying out of this, or anybody in the music business, not just for hip-hop, because Pete did it. No, but, but do you know what, though? If he is gay, great, be gay. Everybody should, not everybody should be gay, but everybody should do whatever <laughs> the fuck they want. Um, it's just the fact that it's 90s, 80s, 90s hip hop. There's no, you're never getting anywhere if you're a gay rapper. And that's not, no. that's not me being some homophobic person. That's the well, fucking rap, way that it was. No, rap music and is notoriously homophobic. Still is, in a certain sense, it's a lot more open, obviously, but it is, there's a lot of rap, you know. And listening to some of the 90s hip hop is very hard nowadays. It's a real shame, actually. It really is. And yeah, I've been trawling back through my old CDs and some of them I'm like, oh, wow, I don't ever want the kids to hear this. Oh, you know God, I mean? no, I can't. I, I can't. There's a lot of time I can't do it. It's like, you know, um, yeah, there's a couple of songs. This guy wanted a lot of hip hop, uh, but it's a lot, some all right hip hop, not very much. But there's a lot of hip hop with N word in it. And I was like, I can't play it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Straight away, it started going, duh, buh, 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 and I was like, I can't play this. Yeah. You know, I've. Uh, Anyway, um, uh, yeah, and one other thing very quickly, they think all that heavy police uh, in there, there's conspiracy is that they were going in there to take out all the tapes, the very rich and powerful people are saying, go in there, take out those tapes and destroy them. Yeah. Or bring them to me. Because he's linked, he has been linked in some ways to that kind of Epstein 
Epstein sort of thing. Um, and sadly, other rappers are being attached to it now, like Jay Z. Um, Harvey Weinstein, Epstein. Weinstein, Epstein. Is, it, is P. Diddy's secret name Frank Stein by any chance? Not Frankenstein or. I don't know. know. Stein! Frankenstein! Frankenstein! Anyway, let's get off that. Cause, you let's know. get off P. Diddy. Um, let's talk about a movie that isn't horror. But it's it's a, it's a remake, and then I found out it was a sequel while I was watching it, and it's got a couple of sexy guys throwing down in it. So there's a bit of a link there. And I'm talking about the 2024 remake slash sequel of Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal uh, and oh, Conor yeah. McGregor. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. You watched it? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I had a lot of fun with this. I didn't mind um, it. Um... Conor McGregor was pretty much naked for most of his scenes. Um, yes. Yeah. I didn't expect that, but there yeah, we go. The best review I heard, a sort of user review of that, is really um, not an actual critique, um, an official one. The best review is he looks like he's got hemorrhoids. He does. He walks like he has hemorrhoids. Yeah, but that's just how he walks. He's got that swagger, isn't now, he? Now, I am not racist in any sense. And, listeners, a lot of you are Irish, and a lot of you are my friends. Um, <clears throat> and I'm in no way... Racist. I've got a lot of male <laughs> Irish friends, right? I'm just some I'm just, of my best friends are. Irish. I'm just going to say this now because I was watching it and I was like, Conor McGregor would make an incredible leprechaun. Wow! Look, just go Imagine there. Imagine that remake. Just go there. A big buff leprechaun. Well, not buff because you, you make him look small. You would give him his pot of gold back because the way he walked, he's like. Hey, like that and that's not me being racist it isn't right. honestly the more you say it the more you sound it i know it. <laughs> but roadhouse it went straight to prime um it's not something you're it's not a classic like the original roadhouse but then if you look at the original roadhouse that isn't exactly shakespeare it's only because it's 30 odd years old that we look at that fondly yeah well um, I, yeah because i was just like whatever i just watched it. i was like i want to watch it's friday night and i was like Fuck it. I'm, getting on, I'm getting on the bandwagon i don't really care I, yeah i love the first movie it's fine but i don't i don't own it in my dvd collection and like i'm not gonna Oh no, there's a re. I don't care. <laughs> it's a kind of fun story. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I want to see him as a bouncer he kicking ass. He was great in it. He was really. His character was fantastic. So fun and upbeat for God. a man that could break everybody's face. Yeah, yeah. He and was it, a really lovely guy in it, which sounds weird. Very but you good have to kind physique. Of watch it and, very good Yeah, physique. he looked great. But, um, and, yeah. Cool, McGregor got an actor shit, that. though. He's a terrible actor. Yeah, but then again, I look at people like the Bally from be. Commando. Hang on, the guy. The, I, I was thinking that, but <laughs> and I was thinking the guy from Commando. I can't remember his name now. Um, is he at the party? Is he at the party, Rick, Richter. Richter. Uh, that's total yeah, recall. No, that's total recall. Who am I thinking of? Um, Bennett. Bennett. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let us abstain, Bennett. Yeah, loads of people from the eighties. It was a real callback to like eighties action films, and none of none it of the baddies in those were any good. It was pretty damn violent. When he, when he, no spoilers, stabbed someone up at the end, that was a bit too much. I was a bit like, whoa. Didn't yeah. like the CGI blood was a bit whack. I Imagine, didn't see any CGI blood. Oh, fucking, for the first hit. The first hit we went on, I was like, CGI blood. But that, I, I would notice that. Um, just going to say, let's not have him as a leprechaun, but let's have him as the leprechaun's enemy. Imagine Warwick Davis versus Conor McGregor. I think Warwick would have his ass handed to him, wouldn't he? I think he'd peel Warwick open. Oh, good Lord. Well, let's move on. There's another movie I watched. Like a banana. Another movie I watched uh, from 1984. 1984, 1984, Gav. Yep. Never seen it. I've always wanted to see it. I love the fact you had to keep saying to me, stop saying I'm not racist. It makes you sound racist. It does. <laughs> People that start that sentence with that are usually about to oh, say something incredibly dude, offensive. If, so, uh, uh, listeners, if someone leans over to you and says, uh, yep. Oh, listen, I'm not being racist, right? Yeah, but don't. Just straight away go, no. Shut, up. shut down. <laughs> shut them down and say no and walk off. Or they get them to walk off. Uh, but I watched Rat's Night of Terror from 1984. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, you know, it was banned. Italian. Uh, right? It's directed by Bruno Mattai. Um, and it wasn't that good, but what was really good was the final scene. And it's a very old film, so I'm going to spoil it. But basically, it's it's set like 100 years in the future. We've nuked ourselves to... The, there's only about like 4,000 people left on the planet. There's a few of those films. And it's a bunch of bikers driving around in leather. Yeah. And they, they find like an old... 
uh, lab that's infested with rats, but it's got food and medicine in it, and that's great. But the, the rats are carrying diseases, and the rats are attacking them and killing them. One rat cl- climbs in a woman's vagina and pops out of her mouth. That's I remember good. that, yeah. But the end scene, which I absolutely loved, and I feel like Bruno Matai, the reason he made the film is because he had this vision, is a load of guys come to rescue them at the end with hazmat suits on, gas masks, and then they take the gas masks on, and they've got giant rat faces, and it's a weird giant man rat evolved. They've, um, they've done a, they've done a uh, Planet of the Apes. They've done a Planet of the Apes, but it's rats. Planet of the Rats. Planet of the Rats. So it was trashy. It was shit Italian eighties nonsense. But I fucking had a good time with it. So yeah, yeah fuck it. Um, tell you what, I had a good time with. Um, Hello. On, on Netflix, uh, Elijah and I watched Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yes, I want to see this. I've heard it's very creepy. Yeah, it's not very creepy. It just has dark elements because of the, the directors. Uh, I really enjoyed it. We watched it actually. Um, watched it in two sittings. Elijah's, you know, a generation of YouTube, so it's sometimes hard for him to do the movies. Um, no, really enjoyed it actually. Um, it's it's Pinocchio. There's not really much more to say. I recommend it. The thing is, Pinocchio was it is a very dark film. It's one of the ones when you put it on Disney Plus. It says this contains elements of abuse, smoking and drink, underage smoking, underage drinking. And when you watch it, you're like, yeah, he gets kidnapped, taken to an island where they're t- like an Epstein island, where they take all these boys, make them smoke and drink until they turn into donkeys, and then they go and work hard labour somewhere. And it's like fucking hell. Like I didn't remember that when I was a kid. I just remembered sort of Jiminy Cricket and. Yeah. you know all the, all the other shit but yeah Pinocchio was dark yeah it's a 12 it's on Netflix UK I don't know if, everywhere else in other regions but um, uh, if you've got young lasses and lads maybe maybe not fucking uh, under 6 maybe I guess I don't know um, yeah what check it out well let me talk about another sexy naked man if I may oh, I was just talking about a children's movie I don't know where we where you should this oh because I was talking about yeah I know I know no. but your segue needs to have more clarification Sorry about that. and context alright let me leapfrog over um, Pinocchio's Fuck nose me. Um, amateurs so I'm working I with watched, amateurs I watched the, the newer Robert Eggers film finally which came out um, over a year ago now <laughs> he's, made a new, he's made a new one since then has he? Yeah, fucking. I know not, not Nosferatu's coming out soon, but has he yeah. made another one? Since no, he's, the no, he's made that. Nosferatu. Oh, yeah, but it's not out. Yeah, but he still made another movie since yeah, 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 you I fucking haven't watched it. I went to cinema to see this because, um, not really. Oh, I'll let you talk in a minute, sorry. Not really a massive Viking fan, to be honest me, with you. It's me, not me really neither. something I'd go for, but because it was him and I saw a trailer and I was like, yeah, um, I fucking love it. What do you think? absolutely fucking phenomenal I need one to watch of the it best again. things i've seen in, in in months and months good cinema trip yeah yeah i can imagine i saw it it's, it's now available on prime if you've got prime it's just free to stream and yeah it stars um alexander skarsgård who I'm, I'm a big fan of anyway i liked him in true blood and anything he's in i usually watch also got nicole kidman ethan hawke and a few other good people in it and yeah it's just like a, a classic viking tale you know but it's also a bit of a john wick story you know of a guy that's like a revenge he's, he's gonna take them all out one way or another it's no one a... knows that this guy is like a fucking absolute dude with his sword and his hammers Oof, boy it's, it was it's good. like uh for me going to cinema watch it um really 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 enjoyed it um it's like watching a classic movie because it's like a classic story mm. it's epic it's revenge it's family driven it's drama it's violent it's uh, uh it was like watching gladiator for me which I've, I I've absolutely never seen gladiator. love well gladiator is is one of those ones that i think it's, it is a classic again, but i think in, again, in a few years time it will be even more of a classic again not a fan of the genre that's why i've not seen it but yeah but, but it's because this think, was eggers though i think if you watch gladys because that's ridley scott i think if you watch that you can't but not love it because of the acting and the epic storytelling but yeah alice was enthralled all the way through the northman she absolutely loved it as well yeah. although i think she probably liked the naked men quite a lot um yeah, but whatever the boat, score the score was fantastic. The cinematography, the story, that's just that's all good. And weird supernatural elements in it as well. Definitely a Robert Eggers film. And this guy is he's, on fire. He's one of my favourite directors. Like I've got uh, proudly centred on my chest a tattoo from his first film. Uh, not yeah. he didn't have a tattoo in it, but uh, a picture from his first film. 
Um, I really like his films. So far, it's a three for three for me. All three of his movies that I've seen that, he's, that are out are, are fucking phenomenal. The Lighthouse, The Northman, and um, The Witch. Uh, I, and I really, really, really cannot wait to see what he does with Nosferatu. I listen to The Lighthouse score quite often uh, when I'm uh, uh, working. What I didn't like, Gav, and I'll quickly talk about this one, was the Firestarter remake. Prodigy. Uh, not not by the Prodigy, the movie. Um, I, I, I didn't really... Um, did I know we, you don't did, like the first one. Did, did we covered it, right? No, no. You, okay. you, you said you didn't want to. Oh, yeah, we may yeah, one day. Uh, I'm, I'm a massive fan of it because uh, I love the book. I think I was I loved, bored of it. Uh, I love the whole... Like, pyrotechnics that they used and drew barrymore and all that kind of stuff so i was like i'm not going to bother watching the remake but yeah, then I'm, i heard but then i heard john carpenter's done the score for it an original score by john carpenter and i thought well that's interesting because he because he was going to direct firestarter that the, the original one this doesn't bode well but he so thought he, john carpenter likes money he, He's got a link to it because he was going to direct the first one and then at the end they dropped him. I can't remember where they dropped that's, him and then he went and made Christine. That's not much of a link though. No, but it, it, in a way it's because he really wanted to do that because he really wanted that. He would have made yeah, that Yeah, but they came to him. Better. I doubt he went to him and said, I really want to score your film. Oh, no, they no, came not to at him all. And no, him. not at all. Of course. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there's a link there. Yeah, I don't think saying, it's like I'm a not passion project. Went to it. Uh, but, but the score is phenomenal and that's definitely good. the best thing about it. <laughs> Um, Zac Efron was all right in it. I watched a cracking movie called Ricky Stanicki uh, on I'm Amazon sick. Prime. Fucking that, hilarious. It? It's so fucking funny, man. Watch that movie. It's like uh, the old school kind of 2000s raunchy sort of comedy American Pie type thing. But these guys, do you know anything about it? I've heard of it, yeah. Very, very good. Check it out. But um, Zac Efron's in it. His chin's gone weird. Yeah, well, he's, he says it's because he had a really bad accident, and the muscles in his chin in the past couple of years have just gone really big and accelerated. It's like, what? Have you seen him in that wrestling movie? No, he's he's just like He Man. That it's insane. It just because uh, I was like, oh, that, oh, they got someone that looks like Zac Efron, and I watched it, and I'm like, hang on, IMDb, and I was like, oh my god, it is Zac Efron. That's weird. Anyway, very very good movie, Ricky Stone, Nicky. Very funny. Do check it out. Just to round up Fire Sorry, Starter, continue all that. I'll say, yeah, yeah. all I'll say is, my problem with it is, um, it was like Stranger Things, that kind of thing. And if I want to watch Stranger Things, I watch Stranger Things. The original was so good because, firstly, it was really good Stephen King adaptation, and back then in the early eighties, it was all real fire. You know, you had these guys on fire on flying around the place and stuff. Um, and the girl was com- Drew Barrymore was really compelling in it. Was and it and- like CGI fire? Yeah, fucking CGI fire. And I'm just like, I can see that this is CGI fire. I don't know why I'm asking that, because I know the answer. Well, they're not going to set Zac Efron on fire, you know? Yeah, they're not going to do pyrotechnics, and it's just a shame. Like I said, the, the, the score was brilliant, and at times there were scenes, this is how bad it was, there were times where scenes would be happening, and I'd just shut my eyes and listen to the score. And, I, and, I'd, think, and I'd be thinking, yeah, I can really feel the carpenter in this little little the synthy bit here this is really good but, and i just it's such a shame that he's decided like i know obviously money but he made the score for this and it's like so you still got it in you dude come on give us a film you bastard yeah but that's like i've said making music to direction of films fucking different it's such a fucking bigger tasking but like does that mean though he's actually sat there with the it, it's either he's composed to it or they he's given them some songs and they no, said it's an original score by john carpenter so he sat there watching it and composing to it but mm-hmm. it must be then like we are throw all this money at you and they probably thought well look we've got zach, Af- zach efron in there he's laughing while he's doing it though because it's the original isn't really a very well-known film like if you're a horror fan you'll know it but it's not like it didn't do amazing so the studio's obviously thinking, okay, look, we've got this Stephen King book that was already made. We've got Zac Efron in it. Let's, if we get John Carpenter to score no, it, maybe we can... Do you know what happened? When they, were, they went, money. what's trending at the moment today? Zac Efron, John Carpenter's got a new album, okay, and Stephen King. Right, what can we do? Do you know what I mean? That's how they look at shit, and this is why I'm and going fire. back to Hollywood, and it's just failing. But there we go. Um... 
not worth not recommended the only other one i wanted to talk about i've only got one more do you have any more before i i do one more please do my um friend. Uh, very quickly, because um, we don't want to bore all of you guys. If you're first time listeners, well, Jamie's itching to hear our thoughts. I on know. The if you're first time listeners, you've probably turned off by now because you're like, "Fucking get on with it!" Oh, you no, fuckers. they love our sultry tones. Um, uh, my eldest, I paid for my eldest to go to the cinema, and I didn't even go to watch the first Omen um, with their buddy, and they said that it's really good, and it should have been an eighteen, and it was a fifteen. I'm starting to hear that it's actually quite good. They said it's really good. I kind of trust them they, they kind of know stuff mm. I've watched a lot of horror movies with Charlie formerly known as Jay formerly known as Jasmine formerly known as Prince yep no no that's somebody else um, no the <laughs> other movie I'm going to do is going back away from Hollywood and going into independent cinema and I was quite happy to uh, to watch it and go to the cinema if it's still in the cinema at the moment with our age and our podcast please go support this movie and watch it because it's really really good fun if you're a found footage f- fan you'll oh, fucking yes, love yes, it yes. if you're a ghost watch fan you'll fucking love it uh, and that's Late Night with the Devil um, if you're a fan of possession movies it's filmed well. in the box ratio sort of you know um, it's filmed like it's an actual TV it has context at the beginning saying in 1972 da, 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 um, there was Johnny Carson and it just talks about all these uh, American late night presenters and this guy who wasn't like number one he's always trying to get there he's always like number three whatever and he's trying to do it and he's at the end of his, his wife passes and stuff there's no spoilers really and it, it gets to a um, point where he tries to do something and it's Halloween night and he wants to get the ratings up and he brings on a real live exorcism to have on the show um, behind the scene you get off air video which is in black and white which is behind the set just following the story and then it cuts back to the live show and you're watching it as you video the tv camera as you would at home um and it cuts to different cam uh, camera shots and stuff a fantastic movie really really go support it um uh that that beats hollywood and what they would do do you know what i mean that that's like good filmmaking and that film will probably go down as a quite a cult film yeah, I'm hearing lots of good things about it. Um, great name. It's a great front cover. It's great. Well acted. The host well, is super good. It's a great good. name because it's a late late night talk show and yeah. then they've called it Late Night with the Devil. You know, it's almost like you're interviewing the it's devil. It's uh, fantastic. I, you know. But it, it would make, uh, I presume that we will probably cover it with Ghostwatch for an episode. I'm putting that down. It's, we do a found footage you, episode. As soon as you message me, um, because they're similar... Yeah, you know, they're found footage, but they're TV show found footage. They so. are. I think we could do it and then talk about found footage again because I still want to do a new found footage like thing. But we could definitely, I'd say, them two's double bill is perfect. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. That's for sure. You, you, you will find you will find it fantastic. I guarantee you. Yeah, I'm sure. And, I will. and I'm listeners, sure I, I think pretty much eighty five percent of you are going to think that's fucking well good, and then there'd be some that don't, obviously. And that's fine too. Well, the last movie I checked out was the la- the only Dario Argento movie I've never seen. Don't know uh, why. What one was it? Opera. Oh yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I've not seen it for many years. Is that the um, where the camera's going round and round in a circle? Mm, yeah, 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 and the ravens flying around, and yeah, no, the no, I never really liked it back in the day. I always liked my tenor braise and the other stuff, you know. Yeah, I don't know why I never checked it out. I thought, I don't know why. I, I, but anyway, I watched it, um, 1987's opera, and really violent at times. And what's interesting, what's, he hates women, Argento. <laughs> I love meeting Argento. He, he, what he does is, is his main lady in it, he tortures her, well, not, not Argento, but the killer, basically s- sellotapes needles under her eyes, and then kills her friends and family in front of her each time and she cannot close her eyes because she'll stab herself in the eye because she's got these needles and then when he's finished murdering whoever it is he then cuts her free she can take the cellar tip off her eyes and then she's got like a dead body um but and it's all about it's all about these people working on an opera she's an opera singer uh you know it's a very theatrical very cinematic and very argento and yeah i'm finally i can now say i've watched everything he's done um even Dracula, Gav. I know that you were asking about that. Yeah, I've not seen it. Was it what's um, that like? Nah, I don't really remember much about it, so that goes to show. Did really. you ever see Giallo? Uh, with um, Adrian Brody. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, I didn't think it was very good. I watched it with no, you. No. Oh, uh, okay. 
I watched it with him. Uh, when I when I met him, it was a random. It's so funny. It was at Fright Fest we're doing this like Saturday afternoon thing. We're like screening like not a full on thing. It's just a random sort of day in a year. November or something, I don't know. They're screening like uh, five films in the day, so not like a long day. Uh, but Darius Gent was there with his. It's from the Mother of Tears trilogy. What was the third one he did of that? Um, it's, the was third, it, was it's, it, it's the third one that came out probably like 10, 15 years ago. Isn't it called The, the Mother it of Tears? It might be Mother of Tears, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Mother trilogy, or whatever it is. Yeah, Mother Superior Trilogy, I think it is, or something. Anyway, <clears throat> um, watch that. It wasn't very good, actually. But, um, yeah, you're it, 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 it just outside. I was outside Fright Fest there, and it's raining. And just this kind of oldish fella kind of just wanders along with a little coat on and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, it's Derry Oshino. It's <laughs> amazing. By himself, just wandering along from the train station to subway. You know, it's like, okay. Uh, and I was like, John, it's Derry Oshino. That's so cool. And, uh, yeah. One met, of my top three horror met him, gave directors him a of CD all time. Of my music. Yeah, 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 totally. He never emailed me. Or he went to junk. Dario at hotmail.com. <laughs> I've uh, I've said this before, but my top three horror movie directors of all time in order Get based out. on based on the output. Me. Um, their style, their output. Me. Their note note you know, their their style that you can spot even if you just see a scene from their films. Me. Uh, and no, stop it. <laughs> uh, is number one obviously is John Carpenter. Number two is Dario Argento, and number three, Sam Raimi. Oh, very good. I, don't, I, I love his style, and it's been copied. And I, although he hasn't made a huge amount of great horror movies, other than four I, or five, I'd maybe. need a day to figure this out and come back if, to you. Hey, it's taken me twenty odd years to, to work. <laughs> yeah, I did sit there going, right? I like Tarantino for this reason. I like Rodriguez yeah. for this reason. Yeah. Absolutely loved opera. That's it for me. That's it for you. Now let's, let's, let's get into... Come on, come on. If so, I reckon Jamie's wetting her pants in her excitement with what is going to come out of our mouths. Well, let's just fill anybody in that doesn't uh, know what a patron's pick is. Uh, every three episodes, one of our patrons gets to pick the two films that we're going to review um sometimes they're linked usually they're just based on something that this person loves um or films from their childhood that you know they want us to discuss um so jamie has selected as we mentioned earlier the dead and the dead 2 um and what the patron will usually do is send an email um or uh, some kind of message which she has done so i can read out her email now or the That's... parts of it anyway should we have a break or do you want to do that now uh, I thought we could do that and then jump straight into the trailer if that's alright it's up to you no okay do it. Does, does Jamie sort of say a little context for each film while she's um, picked them not really no so it's more just the email and then yeah she does but she doesn't sort of break down the movies individually I just wonder if you could break up anything. what she says so you do a little bit now then do a bit of each of her movie for each one but no do it as you wish if you want to go for it now let's do it, go for it now yeah I think so because and I then think we go straight into the movie like normal okay you'll see what I mean when I read this out she kind of sets it up for us to just then have an open discussion about both films so okay. um, she says hello boys Ooh. does she hello. say it in that sexy vo- does she write it in that sexy voice <laughs> I assume so can only seem so she says before i begin i wanted to mention how much i cracked up during the christine review when dan said that arnie was sat at the table with his parents after buying the car and gav just said his mum's a cunt she is and she says you're not wrong lol see there you go she agrees with you there thank you okay okay. she says okay on to my film choices i'll just talk about them both since they are a pair Firstly, I hope you don't get mad that I that I did a movie and its sequel, but I do have a reason. Never mad, never mad. Um, she says, the main reason I chose The Dead is because I thought you guys would get a kick out of the filmmaking history surrounding it, if you don't already know. The Ford brothers even wrote a book about it. Uh, it was such a struggle. Everything from the equipment being stolen to the cast and crew getting malaria and almost dying. I know that you guys are watching them on streaming, but if you can find the special features, the making of documentaries is totally worth it. And that goes for all you listeners as well, just to chime in. I didn't, uh, I didn't know it was a book. Not yeah, there's a book called Surviv- Surviving the Dead, the book's called, Jeff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the story is just nuts, but the product is so is stunning, so I feel it was worth it. But, of course, I didn't have malaria, lol. 
Uh, the cinematography of this film is breathtaking at times with Africa as the backdrop. And on top of that, there are some true moments of dread that get me every time I watch it. The second one takes place in India, and it's pretty much the same idea, different location. However, I am interested to see if you mind the changes to the filmmaking in the second one. The same Ford brother was behind the camera on this one as cinematographer. But with this one, there are some frame rate differences and editing choices that make me wonder why. This one also has a bit of a bleaker ending, in my opinion, although neither of them will fill you with joy um, I hope your time watching and discussing these are as enjoyable as they are for me, Brian and I covered the first one in depth a couple of seasons ago on their show, but I do rarely hear anyone talking about these two films, thank you for this opportunity, they're so polite at the end thank you for this opportunity I hope you allow me to do it again, of course Jamie, absolutely any fucking time um, maybe, she says maybe next time we'll get some werewolves in there for you Oh, I'm just yeah. saying owl. And then she finishes with much love as always, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Thank love you, you to Jamie. bits. You're still, bits. still the reason of it, why I podcast. Ah, I'm getting leg crap. She is. She is the reason. Oh, fucking hell. Sorry, I'm getting leg crap. He's the reason you got leg cramp, Jamie. Um, <laughs> it was a very, <laughs> it's a very weird, uh, not weird, very uh, different choice uh, from you. I did think werewolves, um, but I'm completely happy with it. And yeah. The uh, the guerrilla filmmaking style is right on my street, as you fully well know. Um, so yes, and that's the beauty of the patron picks. Just before we go into the trailer for the dead, is that you can pick um, two movies that you've not even heard discussed. Perhaps like that. for Jamie's last pick around a year or so ago, she chose two high exploitation movies, uh, Straight Jacket and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, movies that you don't really hear people talk about yeah, that often. That was really fun to review, actually. and it was a great, great to get into that little subgenre of horror and talk about all of that. Um, so again, she's picked this for us. It's I'm great. I'm going to excite you now, Jamie, but it, it, it might take a few years uh but uh i was chatting to ben who's a sim photographer deadbolt and uh we plan on doing a um uh a wearable found footage movie but doing it properly um and ben wants to make a very good werewolf costume and he will probably make a fucking incredible werewolf costume um so we are going to make a werewolf movie in a few years time but be well to go and i promise you i'll tell you what I'll, I'll, you'll be the first to watch it like you were she was the first person in america to watch the shadow of death ah Privileges. Okay. You get privileges with the, with being a patron <laughs> and being a friend and a long, a very long time friend as well, Jamie. So thank you, thank you for your email. Yep. Well, I guess it's time to get into the dead. So we'll go into a trailer, and when we come back, we'll discuss um, a little bit about the directors, the brothers themselves, um, and we'll go into like the, the hardships that went down behind the scenes and then the movie itself. So yeah, we'll start with the dead. Here's a trailer, Gav. Can you take it away, DJ? This is Flight Engineer, Lieutenant Brian Murphy, sole survivor of military evacuation flight Lima, November 260. Our orders are to be at the roadblocks to stop the spread by shooting the infected. But I left to find myself. Are you beaten? No, I'm okay. You're American? I'm an engineer, a mechanic. I fix things. I'm just trying to survive. Get out! Get out! It's not possible to survive on foot. The dead are everywhere. The war between us is normal. There's a new war. We have to fight it together.
the Dead from 2010. No, I'm not going to do a trailer voice. 18, hour and 45 minutes. An American mercenary, the sole survivor of a plane crash, has to run the gauntlet, like, like old fucking Clint. He ran the gauntlet. Uh, across Africa. He didn't do it across Africa, though. Battling with the living dead. He also didn't do that either. I'd like to have seen that. Oh, man, won't have, this, the AI's coming. There will be a sub on Netflix, <laughs> and it'll be like fan films, because it'll be the best ones on YouTube, and it'll be people just going, right, I want to see Clint Eastwood fighting zombies. And in it, Africa. That movie will be there. Yeah, love it. And you can I, type it in. To be honest, it because I want to see that, I'm happy for AI to do that. I know it's not real, but I'm happy to watch that film. That's it. I, okay, very quickly, uh, Chuck Still, Night of the Trampires. Have you seen that film? I have not. <sighs> Listeners, fuck me. I know it's Chuck Still, and I'm Chuck, you still go for Chuck Still, yeah, whatever. Um, it's a movie called Chuck Still, and it's claymation, and it's like a, the best 80s... Have, have a look at it quickly, Dan. It's like the best 80s uh, film that you want to have actually as a film. But when you watch it, you're like, this is just an 80s movie. It's so good. Um, you have to watch it. That's my recommendation. That's 2018. What, wow, it looks good. It's fucking incredible. Like, it's, it's a full-on movie, like a 1980s movie that you wish... like You feel like you've seen the film. That's good. It's made by complete lovers of eighties, right? Full on. Me, I watched it with Elijah, and there's the swearing, there's sex references, and then the next, he watched the whole thing, and then a couple of nights later, he's like, "Can we watch Chuck Steele again?" Um, so we haven't, but I'm like, oh, let's, we, "We could do that again because that's fucking banging." Anyway, <clears throat> the dead, the dead. Well, uh, you've given us a synopsis there. Let's talk very briefly about the brothers. The, the minds behind it, Howard and John Ford. Randomly, I was working in their um, uh, the, sit- the little village where they're from today. Just randomly, mm. I saw their IMDb. British filmmakers who did some <clears throat> commercials and some bits and bobs, but not a lot. And then all of a sudden, they were like, "Let's let's make a horror film. Let's make a zombie film." <laughs> what based on having one of them had uh, not a nightmare, but a sort of a a fear of being trapped in a tree with a zombie underneath him. What what would he do in that situation? Um, there's definitely something with making films where, because <clears throat> I don't have it myself, because I've not really travelled much. I don't really like travelling. I like staying to myself, keeping to myself, staying in my town. It's more my little village. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And I kind of, um, that's, that's, I don't, do that when i make films i know the films travel and i know they go where and, and we're making films you're kind of just doing this really random thing <laughs> making a movie such a fucking random thing's going to do with you mate as you, as you know dan uh, dandy i'm calling you dandy tonight aren't i and okay um, gabatron nice like it and these guys from watching the behind the scenes they are just adventurers they're just like they at one point say oh it's like being on a ship and we're like the captains yeah, yeah. which is directing in a lot of sense but they're, they're doing it as in like not just what I would be the directing it they're doing it as in like we don't know what the fuck we're doing we're just going full steam ahead we're jumping over the wall because we can't break through it and it it's just shows these guys if they didn't do filmmaking they'd be climbing Mount Everest together as brothers yeah yeah yeah, uh, and very, that comes out well in their spoken, movies. They're well-spoken British guys who've obviously managed to get a bit of money to make these movies. Not a lot, because, you know, they were like, well, if we go to Africa and film this, fucking, it's going to be really cheap and easy. Fucking, these guys got fucking balls on them. I'll Absolute tell you that. Balls. Uh, considering all the stuff that they, which Will and I will talk about that they went through. Uh, um, it's, it's hard enough making a... F- um, if you want to make a movie in your own house, it can be hard enough because it's so tiring. This is times uh, adrenaline times fucking five hundred to the max. This is just fucking out there guerrilla filmmaking. This is extreme shit. They could make a TV series off these guys if they'd followed. Do you not know I mean if they'd done it? And now? That, that's why they wrote a book because. Um the trauma of making the first one to get over that he had to put it down on paper so they made they, they wrote the book he said it's so trauma uh, coming come to try and do the second one it was very hard to do the second one but they felt like uh, enough time had passed and he could actually do it because he had the first one it almost gave up filmmaking yeah which I get because that shit is that's not that's not executives and 
dickheads like that shut you down for the stupidest reasons because you said something on fucking Twitter uh, 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 and they think you're incompetent to the movie well, now or whatever. That's not them and all the bullshit or you're not getting paid and no one's paying you even though your movie sold millions of copies. That's not that bullshit. This is the bullshit of real fucking proper guerrilla filmmaking. Death. Yeah, yeah. This 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 was actually life or death. Uh, their main actor had a few days left from dying in the first one. Um, loads of shit. They had guns pointed at them. They were <clears throat> robbed at knife point in one of the movies well, well let's talk about that now then so let's talk about just a bit of background on it so they they wrote the script um and it was going to be set across west africa they chose locations that were easy to get to cheap um they were <laughs> going to hire locals to, to be background actors and zombies see we are producer cap straight away as well with this uh uh Oh, yeah, it's great. Oh, okay, what we do? We're gonna make on paper. We're gonna make a movie for this amount. That's not too much money. We could do that. You've got your savings. We've got some credit cards. Arnie Vera's gonna lend us ten grand. <clears throat> yeah. Etc. 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 We accumulate all this money. That's great. We can make a movie. That's the sort of thing we're doing. Us guys in Dead yeah. Films. But they're Thank doing you, Auntie it. Vera, by the way. Thanks, Auntie Vera. Um, but <laughs> they uh, uh, are going. We're gonna make a film, but we're gonna just take it to take this story and just up the production levels completely and make it more accessible worldwide it's an english crew brothers directors filmmakers in africa there's a lot of there's obviously a mixture of uh, um, races etc and cultures almost a little bit with uh, the main person kind of being a fish out of water in both of the uh, films and it brings a production level up there but they their production cost didn't go up there they stayed the same so they're well, running they went out of down. money getting extortion they're getting like like you give us money or with you know six grand whoa, 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 whoa. Let, so let's talk about the things that happened then it's, so let's talk about it's crazy is what i'm saying guys i'll try and list off the things that happened behind the scenes so when they arrived in africa the first thing that happened so they, they set to do a six-week shoot and it took them 12 weeks and the reason for that is for the first three weeks all of their equipment was confiscated by the government the Afri the, whichever part of Africa they were in so they couldn't get any of their equipment back they ended up having to pay bribes to get their equipment they were mugged on their second day there at knife point um, they were held up a couple of times um, someone was following them around trashing their car um, trying to steal it from them everywhere they went um, some of their crew had diphtheria so the main actor Rob Freeman as you said he got caught malaria and had to take two weeks off of shooting on an IV drip in an African hospital so they basically any shots you see of his legs or from the back is one of the brothers the Ford brothers because they couldn't he, he was dying so they they had no choice they, they had to let him recover he had malaria uh, a lot of the crew got food poisoning um they lost some of the footage for no reason at all a real 13 went missing um they had to go back and reshoot those scenes it and was, then all the crops had died so they had to stand up old crops and try and make it look like it to match yeah they had a they had a roll of film <clears throat> it's it's also shooting on film they shooting on film they could be shooting on film it said, but they said real thirteen. Um, but Maybe it was. I thought it was digital. Um, you'd think you'd do digital. You wouldn't think you'd do film because that's that seems to be a lot of, you know. It, by the way, Maybe it was digital. But by the way, if I said to John we could do this, he, 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 uh, the producer of Deadbolt, he would shit a brick. He would fucking have kittens. Uh, just because of the, safe, the health and safety all the way along. But yeah, Real 13, <clears throat> they're sending a load of footage back, and Real 13, for whatever reason, just wouldn't work. But all no. the other footage would. So they had yeah. to reshoot it again, and they're gutted, because apparently the first takes were very creative. And and they there was a, a few scenes they were filming over a day or so, where they were, all, they were firing AK-47s, obviously with blanks in them. And then they were instantly surrounded, after about 12 hours of shooting, they were instantly surrounded by armed African uh, military police. And they were all pointing their guns at them and questioning them and throw, pushing them around. And then they realised where they were shooting was five minutes away from the president's house. So they'd been spotted firing all these guns. Yeah, it's, and a, stuff. it's a shame a local didn't say, 
<clears throat> do you hear about the bits of the locals t- uh, at yes. one point said well, it's oh uh, by the way it's been 24 hours and none of us have eaten yes that the- this uh, i've got to say uh uh that i wouldn't have allowed that to happen um well they ran out of water to the point that people were drinking those blue freezer blocks that, you know, because no one had any water that's just i, I you, um, they you, all lost so much weight that you, you definitely the, get like, one of the brothers couldn't hold up the um, steady cam because he, he becomes so weak from weight loss over the, the 12 weeks they were there. Um, conversely, though, to all of that, all of the locals absolutely loved them, took them in, helped feed them. They caught some chickens at one point because they had no food. Um, and the locals, were they were paying the locals very little money to be the background zombies and extras yeah. but that was more money than these guys had seen in years so they were like we'll do anything put contact lenses in me it is still quite fun uh, they had to cut around a lot of the zombies because some of the zombies were laughing and stuff um, but you do get tunnel vision making films definitely it's, it's, you're literally like that's it even building up to making it all you do is you sleep eat shit have sex with it it's all you do is you think about wow. that but none of it else matters it is just that uh, all the way through and when you finish you still go as you're in, in the editing process it is that and i understand tunnel vision but uh i feeding crew and just making sure that's looking after them at least having someone who's looking after them should say i don't know um i don't agree with that it's the only thing i don't agree with they also um, had weird accidents happen. They felt it was cursed, like uh, yeah. the car crashed into a cow and then the cow's gut sort of fell all over. And then one of the villages they arrived at to shoot, they had arrived so late with an actor that they'd flown in from Ghana. Um, they, they only had an hour and a half to shoot with him before it went dark. And when they arrived at the village, the first thing that happened was they had to pay like £500 to someone so that they would sacrifice a goat in front of them to make sure that they were allowed to um, film in this village and these two brothers were just like yeah. telling this story like it was like oh we went down the pub and had a few beers last night and it's yeah. like but you guys are but they they turned up and they said to celebrate you being here we've got a slot this way like, oh okay great then they said yeah you've got to pay for it yeah oh uh, the other thing that, that the other thing that was interesting and again in some ways charitable because they've given these people money um to, to be in this movie you know and it's probably pittance they paid them but a lot more a lot of money for these guys but they also hired a lot of amputees because in the area there's a lot of amputees they're near sierra leone with the the diamond mines and stuff um so they hired a lot of amputees to be zombies which looked great because you know that's fucking awesome you don't need any cgi because you've already got a guy with one leg or one arm they just put a bit of dressing on it well, to make it look it's, good it's old school filmmaking isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah it's, it's so. creative filmmaking what yeah. it is so uh, and and there's more stuff to come when we talk about the dead too but that is the the, the, the gist of really what happened and, and you gotta think it's like uh, uh let's put down the basics uh a couple of brothers want to make a movie from england they've taken a crew of them of at least what five five people probably with them i think so and they've gone out africa with a bunch of money and their cameras can be sent out to them and then they're just getting there get their cameras and which didn't turn up for weeks after in one of the films like three weeks after they were already there but but essentially five people uh most of them white i think um of english people very easy as a target um especially with like cameras and it's like you've got money as well so that's why they were extortioned um, at times, um, but well, even, even the car, there people were trying to take their car because there weren't many cars around. You know, it's essentially them guys having an idea. Going, we could do this a five five person crew. And let's go. We could do it for twenty six days. They thought they could. It obviously went over uh, because of problems, and they ran out of money and stuff. But that's just that is just some crazy shit. That is found footage style filmmaking as well. Very much yeah, so. It is. Uh, uh, just going, let's go there. And we think, because when they got into problems, and it, we can say this now because it applies for both films, it sets up the film for both uh, the audience to listen to us review the films uh, and what happens in the movies. You can kind of understand why things happen and it will be apparent why Why is this a bit lacking or why is this so the same? Do you know what I mean? And it kind of makes sense really in some certain ways. But yeah, it's a crazy idea to do that. It's a, it is like the found footage way. It is just literally like let's go out there. If we've got a problem, we we'll just work around it, and we we'll just keep shooting. We we'll just keep going, keep going. Keep uh, going. And what this does, what this did do though for me, um, balls out you know, filmmaking. The film looks great because it's in Africa, so it's beautiful. You know, scenery, authentic villages and deserts. Um, but <clears throat> I really feel like the two main actors in it, Rob Freeman that played Lieutenant Murphy, and 
Prince David Ocell, who played Sergeant Daniel, they were both fantastic in it, I think. And that's because there was a real threat looming on them at all times. Um, you know, there was that, that scene where Lieutenant Brian is climbing a rock face. He was still recovering from malaria. He didn't actually really know what he was doing. He just decided to start climbing up a cliff. And they were like, let's just film him. Uh, he didn't really know what he's doing. He'd been out of hospital for two weeks. Uh, and there's a real sense of tension. Uh, and, and that's probably because behind the scenes, they were worried about African pirates turning up any point well, just to steal, steal all their shit. Where we talk about part two, there's a certain point, there's a certain thing happened with a car of a mm, couple of people yeah. in it. While that's happening, what we know what else was happening behind the camera. Yeah. With a gang there, guy, give us your fucking money or we're going to stone you to death. Yeah. So both well, we'll these get films, to that story when we get to the second one. It's so, pretty fucking... so listeners, I think you've come to the right podcast if you want to hear about <laughs> these films because we'll be doing the behind the scenes as much as possible with these ones. Yeah, and like I said, it's not often I say that. You know, you should watch a film on its own merit, as you said earlier, Gav. But I think with these ones, you, you, it's good to know what's what the, what's going on behind the scenes. But um, yeah, but at the same time, it's one of those things like. Um, you have to just watch it as a film uh, and merit on its own apart. IMDb doesn't have like that, oh, we, this is the IMDb, we go easier because the film Yeah, your problems. average show is going to watch right. a film and just uh, rate it as the film. So it's one of those things, but at the same time, it's not bad, they're both not bad movies. So no. to be honest, hands down, like, well, what the fuck done? Do you know what I mean? Um, funny enough, though, the second one is better. Uh, I thought that. And then after watching all behind the scenes of both of them, I'd already seen the behind the scenes of the first because I... Uh, they, they 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 talked about it uh, at Fright Fest. They were on stage talking about it, so I looked, watched it. Them talk about it, and uh, then I got the DVD and it's on the behind the scenes. Then, um, and the second one as well, uh, the craziness behind the scenes. Where am I going with this? I don't know. No idea. Neither do I. Um, anyway, uh, oh yeah, second one's better. And oh yes, because now I know what's going on with behind the scenes. They themselves almost say. Yeah, we learned from the first one. It was fucking crazy. It's like we didn't know what we're doing, but this one we did know. They had it. In a, they metaph metaphorically said it in a better way. Um, yeah, uh, but I, yeah, I think the second one's better film. Hmm. Well, <laughs> let's get into it. Go um, for it. So we start off in the desert, as you would imagine. They, they make the most of these incredible landscapes behind them um one other thing very quickly the dead great name you'd think that's like very popular it's about t number 20 in my imdb list it takes ages for me to find it because it's not obviously in the algorithm a popular looked at film and there's a very famous john houston film called the dead really but it's, such, the a, 70s, it's it? such a good name and you'd think it'd be more well known or something do you know what yeah, I mean it's very simple from the name yeah, yeah it very does, simple it name does the job and you think it, it's, it would be like oh my god is there a movie called The Dead yeah you've got to watch that do you know what I mean it's The Walking Dead so you know mm. but anyway it's, it's a weird one because I thought it had been higher up the list but no had to, you had to look for it so Desert Lone Man walking along he's very hot he's very tired he's wearing um, like a, an African robe and headpiece it's a white man though it looks it is, um, it's great it's a lovely contrast you've got like this uh, like you say white person all in black then behind them all yellow it's a great contrasting of colours and we've got um, it's a very Lawrence of Arabia sort of yeah. look to it and he sees a zombie uh, African fella with a bone sticking out of his leg and what I love about the way these zombies look, because everybody in this is black, you know, all the zombies are, are black guys, they're all locals. The white eyes that they've given them really contrasts against their skin tone, and it's you just get this really unusual look. Do you know what I mean? There's well, something... Just to let listeners know, that we're going with classic old-school Romero zombie style. Yes, yes. These are the shuffling... Shufflers. You know, arms missing, white eyes. Which, I love this first one when it comes across it. <clears throat> you know, what's he going to do? And I love it. It's it's what makes sense. It's what Walking Dead do. And I'm going to tell you something else about this in a minute, another movie, which this it should be. Um, I love that he just walks past the zombie. I think that's yeah. a really good thing. Saves his bullets, walks around it. But this is, right, Hollywood, again, failing Resident Evil movies, failing. Get these two brothers to make a Resident Evil movie. Oh, yes, yes. That's a good shout. These movies are like a game. The they way are. it's shot... Because it's 
off the hip running gun we're going to make up as we go you're going to go around this corner we'll do that go up there run down there we'll make up as we go That and then edit it that's the power of editing if you've got the shots you can't make it work even if you haven't got the shots you can't make it work um, but yeah th- this is this is Resident Evil to a T if they did Hollywood just went let's give these guys not a huge amount of money make them still work for it but obviously not so make sure the fucking cast and crew have been fed and everyone's fed and the conditions <laughs> are a bit fucking better but still in the same style so you still keep them hungry in that style they probably would do anyway with budget I imagine these guys of real adventurers they can make an amazing resident evil movie yeah both of these movies actually are both a survival horror game if i was a producer for the for the who owns resident evil in that studio i would that's what i'd say mate get these guys and you what you watch it'd be a fucking a fucking everyone would think it's amazing for sure yeah. well like you say it's interesting to see that he doesn't shoot this zombie he walks around it he's obviously he's low on ammo and uh, but he does end up shooting another one in the head that he sees he loots the body for ammunition finds some money throws it aside no need for money yeah. apparently apparently that money that he threw aside was actually the crew's last amount of budget for food they had to use it in the shot as well yeah, because uh, we've got money just put the money we got to, don't let have it prop- blow away uh, yeah I don't think they have prop money do you know what I mean um, and then we get a flashback as to how this all started. Uh, really well done, uh, considering it's all on a plane. You know, it's supposed to be a plane crash. Do, you don't really need to have prop money because the prop will always be there. Okay. Do, you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Just thought about it. Um, so, yeah, flashback on a plane. Um, injured people, a baby crying. And the, the, this plane's going down. Apparently you know, it's the last evacuation plan, a plane. Last plane. Like, so we have a little bit of a subtext on the old screen. They're trying to get all of the foreigners, aka the white people, out of Africa, all the military and their family, because there is this epidemic, this pandemic of zombie mania going on. Um, but the plane itself is going down. Is one that like WrestleMania? Bitten. It's like WrestleMania, but it's zombie mania. Rob Zombie is the uh, the MC. And he gets all the zombies to fight each other. Alice Cooper and stuff. I just like musicians fighting each other. Um, <laughs> is it like Woodstock? Zombie <laughs> mania. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. You get like really? like uh, the Misfits as one wrestling team. Great. Versus like Marilyn Manson and fucking Alice Cooper and Ozzy Osbourne. Fucking okay. hell. R. Kelly and P. Diddy of a tag team. It's like old MTV. It was an amazing show. MTV is Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah, that was good. That was so like that. good. It was good. Um, yeah, so essentially the plane ends up going down. Um, one of the guys uh, kills himself before he turns. And we get, we're get we going to come back to this flashback on and off as, to, to flesh out what exactly happened. And, but. and the plane has uh, uh, <clears throat> had an assortment of different types of people. Yeah. different sexes different ages uh, different uh, classification obviously some soldiers some civilian um, uh, so yeah it's a real hectic they all are obviously in like distress in their different ways it's, it's a pretty decent shoot they shot this in uh, England um, it's a pre- pretty decent little plane some, it's, good. it's one of those things with a plane scene especially in a movie with no budget it could go very bad it could, yeah, it look, could look awful <laughs> it could look like someone's living room it could I mean? look really shit and this looks pretty decent there's nothing yeah. wrong with it at all it doesn't take you out of the movie at all nah. um, we then cut back to a village now one thing I want to mention as well is because they didn't have the budget or they didn't have much lighting in fact they only had one generator that was so noisy they had to keep it far far away from set because it was draining out some of the audio but because of that, all the lighting, most of the lighting in this is quite natural and always looks great. It's either really sun-drenched or at night time it's lit by torchlight or, or firelight. Um, and I think that looks great as well. Um, yeah, it's just using what you got. Yeah, and it's the beauty of not having anything, so it just ends up looking great. And it's and you got to remember with this, I don't know where they're sleeping and stuff, I guess hotels here and there, um, but you got to remember... I think they slept in the cars. you got to remember, it's literally like, all we do is make films. From when we get up in the morning, it's not like we're going sightseeing, we're just making films continually. So yeah, it's daytime, nighttime, and then working with what you've got, like you say, at nighttime, what we do? We've got a fire, you say, like, okay, let's keep filming, we just keep shooting, shoot, shoot, shoot. They were working till four or five in the morning as well, most nights, getting a few hours of sleep and then getting up the next it's day and doing again. Probably better doing that could cool down. It's very true. Um, what are your thoughts on the gore? Because we now see... Um, uh, it's, it's, 
for a zombie film, it's a decent like if this was set in England, for example, and it's the same thing with shufflers that stuff, using the exact same methods of effects. It all looks decent because yeah. it's contact lenses and simple mouth effects or simple bites of rip of flesh. It looks great. They haven't gone um, to over, over the top, top, have they? No, less no. is more. Less, less is, is more. more. We always say less is more. Yeah, so it looks good. Um, yeah, uh, so playing wreckage washes up on the beach and we meet our hero from the plane lieutenant brian murphy played by rob freeman well done sir for getting through your malaria well you took two weeks off of shooting jesus what a hell of a shoot for him this was um he's washed up on the beach body parts have been washed up on the beach he finds a crate that's locked uh and sees some other soldiers we, d- we did see also a cut uh, a cut in the scene of a village on fire and loads of crazy stuff going on there cut back yeah, that was what I mentioned. So all the stuff lit by by torchlight and f- flames and stuff. Indeed, yes. It looks very good. Um, but yeah, so uh, he grabs a he breaks open the crate. He takes the new uniform out of this, it. This is where straight away I was watching it. Uh, I was just like Resident Evil. He goes to this crate, game. pulls. Yeah, it's a video game. It, he's, he's got ammunition. I don't he's got a new know outfit. If they realise that they've made a video game, uh, uh, made a great Resident Evil. <laughs> I can imagine these two were. As their brothers, I can imagine they played this shit out of Resident Evil oh. One and Two when it first came out. Yeah, I reckon. Absolutely, because we all did. Let's be honest, and, it was a dream. And come like true. I said, the way they shot this film is is so, it's literally found footage, it's exactly the way, the same camera techniques, but this time you're doing it as the way it should be. Do you know what I mean? It's not first person. It's brilliant. Um, we get a few shots now. Of one of the guys gets his face blown off. It looks pretty good. One of the zombies. It all looks very good. Um, Brian, as I say, he's broken that crate open. He, he runs off into a forest. One thing on... with both of these films is very, very each time that the main character is so reliant on luck. So often, is this car going to work? The zombies are really close. Oh, it does. I had no idea. Is this motorbike going to work? Is this crate going to have a gun in it? And not a bunch of bananas, because you can't just go and shove bananas in zombies' mouths. I mean, you can could do do you zombies a, eat fruit i don't know Lay, like, listeners please let us know zombies do they eat fruit yes no thank you or vampire don't know. vampire fruit or bats don't do. care yeah vampire oh. fruit bats do but i don't know about it because apparently in fright night the reason he's eating an apple is because he's he comes from he's descended from a, a vampire fruit bat oh is that reason that's that's one of the theories uh, anyway, back to this one. So, yeah, um, we also then start seeing this other guy, a soldier, an African soldier called Sergeant Daniel, and he's looking around the village. There's body parts everywhere. There's really good use of body parts. They've got some great prosthetic limbs and arms lying around, haven't they, in this? Whenever yeah. you see one, it's, and it's again, it's just a few seconds. They don't linger and, on it. And these are all uh, fully working live AK-47s. Yes just got blanks in them which they got in trouble with because they were near the president's house as we mentioned whoopsie probably should have checked that guys and i bet they didn't really have an armorer either um there is some cheesy vibes in this do you Uh, think they had insurance no um there is some cheesy stuff in this one uh certainly in the second one but in this one you know I suppose we need it, but there's a when he gets changed in the forest, Brian, and he put get he, he gets his ammunition together. He then pulls out a photo of his wife and looks at it, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. But I get we need to know that he's he's got you know a wife and possibly children. I think uh, that he wants to get back to, so that's fine. But it just felt a bit like yeah, just survive for yourself, mate. Um, and then we see a cornfield. Uh, this is the infamous cornfield they had to go back and reshoot in and there's a zombie attack uh, and he's in the cornfield Uh, he has to shoot a few zombies here this is where the eyes are really peeking through the corn stalks and it looks really spooky Um, so we're now following mainly following Lieutenant Brian but also we keep cutting back to this African soldier called Daniel Um, who wants to find his son he's trying to find his son he finds an old lady uh, in his village probably the only lady left alive and she's been bitten and she says look your son's escaped um he was picked up probably picked up by a military convoy to take him to this other village miles miles away that's where they're taking the survivors we've heard and he's like right i'll go and find him so he's got his mission and brian's got his mission and of course these two are going to end up crossing paths at some point uh and it's you know it's classic 
classic story but it kind of works really you know what i mean yeah. uh, the fact that both, like i said earlier the fact they're both great actors in my opinion anyway especially daniel the african soldier he's really compelling it must there's something about his accent um and you know and the way he delivers his lines he's just yeah, yeah they're both very decent yeah yeah uh what where are we at now oh yes yeah, so um brian then finds another empty village now you're going to notice this guys there's a lot of finding an empty village driving for a little bit that's a little bit that's the only thing which uh, obviously it comes down to you know the budget and how hard it was to do stuff and they had problems trying to shoot in some villages and things um uh is the geography in here makes it feel very samey and because it's like an hour 45 minutes it does feel a little bit long in that regards where the second one they've i think they've addressed the situation or they've been more prepared or had more money or they've just been more organized and managed to get things done they've been able to go to different places Uh, they did also have problems in some villages in india they actually had loads of problems with dead to i don't know why they do this to themselves so the interviewer said i think you've invented a new filmmaking style masochistic filmmaking because it's like why would you do that to yourself because uh, exactly like you said but i think it's because they want to climb mount- mountains yeah. they're those guys they're those guys that's exactly what it is they're just so the I filmmaking version not, of those guys yeah, i was about to say i wouldn't do it yeah i wouldn't do it i'm 47 so you haven't seen me do that because i'm not doing that i'm not going to do that either Oh, I'll go to then. some local woods here. We might be going up to Scotland eventually to make a bank the next film, but that's about it. <laughs> these um, these two brothers clearly have a love of horror, though, and know what works because it's really hard to get tension right. And this next scene now, yeah, Brian, these are finds, Brian finds this village. He finds a car, and he's got to basically take the wheel put the wheel back on remove the jack check it works all the while there's like four or five zombies very slowly shuffling towards him they're quite far away but he knows he's got a limited amount of time to do all this stuff to this car and get it working before they get to him and it is quite a tense scene i think it works very well puts the wheel on uh yeah this is they just must like i said shoot this just completely shoot 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 have that much stuff so when you go back to edit it you have enough to be able to do that but it still does take a skill i presume these are the editors as well or well, maybe not have a quick look um it, it still does take a skill to get the time and everything right because obviously we all know there's good movies and shit films you know all of our own opinions um but anonymously a lot of uh, films like the good films they are good films because they are good films and they're made in a way like you say you can put across the eeriness and the creepiness and all that sort of stuff and uh, do it properly and they must have enough pickings with uh, what they shot to be able to do that f- fairly well yep edited by Howard Ford doesn't surprise yeah. me at all because imagine they've like we've got no money to hire it's their baby isn't it we have to do it. well we've got no money we fucking we have to do it, edit it ourselves and yeah it's their baby absolutely they know what they've got it could it could be so much fucking hours that's another thing editing if you've got out if stanley kubrick's editor must be like fuck off you twat stop <laughs> doing so many takes do five you, takes you fucking what about idiot Zack snyder's editor christ but that's what I'm, it, it, then he's like uh, now i need a director's cut oh man here's my eight hours director's <laughs> cut but yeah it, that's the wrong thing for editing only it's the worst thing editor if you've got hours and hours and hours and hours of footage to watch um but with this though that's why i did it themselves and you, yeah they must have been horror fans lovers who knew how to make a fairly tight film with creepiness it works really well because you've got to remember they also had a massive translation problem with both films and have a translator but at times yeah. we had to say quick slow a zombie slow a zombie because they only had one or two takes so like the zombies going towards it we can only shoot this once we've got to move on that's what they were doing so literally get on the motorbike and go but he's getting on the motorbike and he's trying to get it started because the motorbike's not legitimately not working very well because it's a shit motorbike they've just fucking got out of nowhere and then I have to quickly say to the translator, say to the actor, slow, slow down, slow down. And all of a sudden the zombie has to slow down. Stuff like that. It's like fucking hell. But you just edit around it. You just cut around so, it. So, so many obstacles for them. But you'd cut um, around every, like, a zombie's smile. As soon as, like, okay, you've got a scene that he comes out, blah, 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 shoots some zombies. Then one zombie just smiles. Just the frame before it smiles, you obviously, you cut there. Cut. Yeah. Take the other way. Then you put all these little bits together. It's exactly how you do found footage. You put all those bits you like, and then you go, okay, that goes there. Okay, it's a jigsaw. And eventually, it starts to make itself. It's quite easy, actually. 
you just have to have patience but yeah these guys did it really well well brian gets the truck started just in time he does shoot one zombie but then that that noise of the gunshot attracts all the other zombies to look round. So it's classic zombie. They're attracted to noise. Um, so he, he drives off. He sees a soldier in the middle of the road, but it's a zombie soldier. Mm-hmm. We get a really good hit. You know, a car hits it, and then it splats its Crushes head. His head and it and it's such looks like great. good effects. It's like old school Peter Jackson. Really good. And then he gets out, and he takes the water. And obviously it's the all soldier's practical. got water. There's no CGI blood in this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he takes the the water from this guy. So again, a survival game. You know, you collect your your food, your yeah. water as you go in. So he's collected the water off this dead uh, guy that he just splattered the head off. Then we see the car um, stop when it gets to some rocky terrain. There's too many rocks in the road. So I'm getting sorcerer vibes now, Gav. It's all a bit ooh, tense. Um, and he gets out, and the zombies start swarming him. But yeah. here comes Daniel, Sergeant Daniel Dembele, and he saves him points the gun at him he says stay where you are are you american yes are you bitten yeah i love the fact that the first thing he asks him is are you american then he says are you bitten no i'm not uh, yeah, hang on so if he says no i'm not american oh okay <laughs> like I, I don't know is he gonna shoot him because he's you're not american Pfft, like john wayne movies you're See dead you then sayonara <laughs> Well, um, they end up sort of making a bit of a truce, and not a truce truce, but Daniel says, I'll push the car because it won't go over these rocks, uh, and you drive it. And they get it over the really difficult bit, and then Brian just drives off, and Daniel waits there, and then Brian stops the car, and you think, yeah, he's he's realised his soldier's probably got a good good heart. And And Daniel knew that Brian would do this, so they then get in the car, and they become they have to become friends so this is the point in the game where you meet that character that you you're not sure if they're going to double cross you but you haven't got much choice really you know this is a soldier he's got weapons he's got a fucking machete later on and he's pretty good with it as well so and he knows he knows the area i was uh uh listening to because it's that whole sort of thing like <clears throat> zombie movies and virus films you have that like, quite a lot where you have like these things happen walking dead <clears throat> Walking Dead because obviously it's so long and they managed to be able to have these relationships come in all these different things so just random characters but it's that same thing we all know it now because we all live through Covid mm. where it's a worldwide things happen it's a bit unknown what's going on it's a virus da, 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 da. and it was at some time you, I think for everyone it's, you would have had a moment of anxiety or, or slightly scared in Covid because you're like what the fuck it's not right for my human type to know this so you'll come together um, a little bit um, funny enough, I was listening to today, which is really like it. I was listening to War of the Worlds um, audio book, and I've never actually got into the story. We used to have the bloody record, so you just have that. Do you know what I mean? All the songs and shit. Um, really yeah. going to that. It's quite funny. I was actually working in Weybridge where it's set, which is really weird as well. Um, but there's a bit where he, one of the dudes, is hiding out with another guy and he doesn't know him and he's just going crazy and talking loud the whole time and he wants to kill him and there's only so many rations they're saying we've got a rationist we've got this and they're all sort of coming together and it's so funny though uh, those sort of stories um but it's the same situation with this these two guys are like we're in the same situation we don't need each other we probably might not even be mates but um uh, we're gonna have to just trust each other and hope for the best yeah, well, well, Daniel says to him, look, I know these roads and I want to find my son, so let's form this uneasy alliance. And Lieutenant Brian says, well, is there an air base near? He says, well, there is, but there's no planes that work there. And he says, well, look, I'm an engineer. That's what I do in the Army. I'm an engineer and I can fix anything. So if you can get me to that air base, I'll let you have the car and you can go get your son, and I'll try and get a plane together and get the fuck out of here. So they got this alliance. And it, again, it's a pretty decent story, you know, two two characters, occasionally a zombie pops up, but it's pretty good. And the dead are literally everywhere as they're driving along, you know. We get these long takes of them driving and driving, which apparently sometimes they weren't even driving. They had to push the car, because by the end of the shooting, it had been trashed so much by these people that were following them around in the middle of the night, trashing the car. It didn't even run. So the whole crew were pushing the car along while they were doing their dialogue inside the car because it wasn't even running. It's so crazy, the shit that they, they had to do. But you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that watching this, you know. Um, but yeah, so we, we see um, 
uh, some soldiers, a convoy of African soldiers, military trucks, with loads of survivors in them, and they've got Daniel's son in the in the truck. Because so, yeah. it originally was going to be our main actor, but he was in hospital for malaria, so they're like, right, improvise. It's a whole gang of military uh, army coming down instead. And then they found out they were probably the guys that were going to come and tell them off for sh- shooting guns near the president's house. Whoopsie. Um, they arrive at a deserted building. This, again, so Resident Evil. It is. There's a building here, and who's locked inside? A ton of zombies. And they want um, to go in there to get some morphine and some other stuff. So they shoot them, they break in, they it's, find morphine. It's, honestly, if you uh, didn't watch this, or you're going to watch it again, or whatever, uh, or you've not seen it and you want to check it out, but look at it. It's like a Resident Evil movie. They kill a chicken because they're both so hungry. Um, but behind the scenes one of the days they hadn't eaten for 24 hours they actually got found two chickens and killed them and ate them i wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the chickens and they just shot daniel picking it up briefly and then said right right, okay now cut okay now actually go and cut that chicken up we're gonna have some chicken tonight more than not i expect (laughs) they ate it yeah (laughs) um they hit the road again and the car breaks down um Brian says, do you think we can make it on foot? Daniel says, ah, not going to be great, but we could try. So they start walking and they arrive at the army base. Um, there's quite a few dead people there, the bodies as well. But there's some gasoline, which is great. They need the gasoline. Um, there's some planes, but they've literally got no wings on them. They, he's not going to be able to fix them as good as he thinks he is. Yeah, he's no um, fucking B.A. No, he's not. B.A. would literally, or MacGyver would literally get there. Get out of the way, fool! He'd just make a plane out of... He would have made, by now, the car would be a plane if it was B.A. Which B.A. is my uncle? Oh, B.A. I love B.A. Uncle B.A. Uncle Mr. T. Uncle Baracus. Uncle Baracus? <laughs> uncle Baracus is coming over. He's going to build me a treehouse, Mum. Oh, God. It's going to be seven stories. Hey, but the thing is, Mum, I get a headache. Every time he bends over to play with me, I just, it's gold chains in my face. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> just give him his glass of milk and he'll pass out. We put drugs in it. Hannibal, Uncle, uncle Hannibal's giving you the drugs to put in his milk. Poor old B.A. Have a glass of milk, B.A. Every episode that happened. Is this a new sitcom? Is the A-Team now a little sitcom in a house? There was actually one episode of... Living with B.A. There was one episode of the A-Team where they had to go to Africa. It clearly wasn't shot in Africa. It was shot in a forest in in America. But B.A. was like, I'm not getting on any plane fall, as he would always say. Of course. So they gave him some orange juice or some milk. Yeah. And he was on the plane... And they were all really worried he was going to wake up. They get to Africa and he wakes up. And they're like, oh, quick, wind, wind his watch. So he doesn't know what time, so he doesn't think, you know, anything different. And then they're wandering around and he's like, starts thinking, hang on a minute, I think I might be in Africa. Are we in Africa? And they're like, no, no, BA, of course we're not. We haven't been on a plane. What are you talking about? No, no, no. Poor old BA. Yeah, and it's been Africa as well. You think he might want to know that he's popping back to Africa or back something. Back to the motherland. Yeah. Plus, it's fucking hot there as well. And he there's would, going to be w- different know. animals and, he, yeah. you know, he would know. Come on. Yeah, Jamie, anyway. Jamie I, don't, I don't bet you didn't think we could talk about the A-team while we're viewing the dead. She was hoping we would, Gav, let's be honest. Was that a side note of hers? P.S. Try and talk please, about the A-team. He's bringing a sitcom of P.A. <laughs> to conversation. <laughs> it's called Drink Your Milk for... Drink your milk, fool. That was that's the end of each episode. But, drink but, your milk, fool. But it's drink your oat, oat milk. It's twenty twenty four. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, so, um, what happened? So they search the building. Um, they start walking around. Um, uh, they say, "Look, we're going to have to help each other here. What what can we do? Uh, the radio doesn't work." Um, He's, he starts radioing, but he thinks there's no point. No one can hear me. You know, there's, I'm not getting any signal or anything on the radio. There's probably no one around. They've raided this office. You know, it's just it is what it is, really. Um, Brian gets attacked and uses a head, head a fire extinguisher to cause some pretty fucking good looking head trauma, doesn't he? It's just, this it's is just like, all of it's really good in effects. Yeah. Um, uh, Daniel gets the fuel in a barrel and he says, look, let's help each other. So they then decide to walk all the way back to the car, fill it up and then drive forward again. So that's what they do. Nighttime, they hide very quietly in the trees. Zombies are walking past. And again, it's a zombie survival game. You're hi- Rather than shooting them all and taking them all out, 
you're saving your ammunition, you're saving your energy, you're hiding in the trees. They don't know you're there. They're not lions. They can't sniff you out. They're just going to walk past you if they can't see you. It's great stuff. Good tension. Mm-hmm. Um, they fill up the car. Some zombies approach them. The other guy's just hacking them up. Just he's like, let me just grab my machete. Hack. 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 He looks fucking great. He's got his little beret on. The other guy's just fill up the going, this is not like the normal petrol station. He's like, you just take care of them while I'm doing this. And all you can hear is, and they don't show it, which is good. All you hear is, whoshing, whoshing, whoshing. And you see the look on Brian's face as he's like, clearly is looking over at his buddy, just hacking these guys to bits. Yeah, that wouldn't be good if it was a normal petrol station. That'd be bad. Get, get us a quarter past it at the kiosk. But that'd just be awful. Did I ever tell you about the story about the um, my grandpa? Uh, go with, with, with the neighbour who cut his wife's head off. No. I think I might have done on this show. Remind me. My grandpa was my par- my mum is from Zimbabwe, um, near South Africa, as you know, and some of our listeners might remember. And uh, my grandpa was a policeman over there, obviously white policeman, um, one of the only white policemen really in that area at that time. And uh, he was well known in the village they lived in. And one day there was a knock at the door. The family were having my my mum and her brothers and sisters were having dinner around the family table. So it's your granddad. Like, yeah, my granddad, yeah. yeah. So they were like five. My, my mum was probably like five or six. And it was the neighbour from the next farm. And he'd walked the sort of ten minutes over to, to my, my, my mum's, my you know, my granddad's house, knocked on the door and said, like, I've done something really bad. I need you to take me to, to the police station. And he was holding his wife's head behind his back. Surprise! I had an argument with my wife and he cut his wife's head off and taken it to show my granddad... You don't, you don't need proof. It's not like I'm not going to believe you. So it's not like you come to... round every night telling me you've done something with your wife. I've, I've you know, had an argument with a wife tonight. It's not like every night. You don't have to bring me the surprise head. Why did so you bring my, the head? My Just tell me she, you've done it. My mum, All my mum remembered of that was that there was a knock at the door and then her dad had to sort of go to work. But it wasn't until she was a lot older, obviously. You're not going to tell your kids to their adults about that. Yeah. I, I was I'm, like, fuck I, it hell, Mum. You were close to a severed head when you were having your dinner that night. Fucking <laughs> hell. I'm getting a, a, fucking hell. That's gnarly. That's like know, literally someone at the door of a severed head. I'm getting that house party vibes. Follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip. <laughs> oh, God. There would have been a drip, would there? Jesus. Why did he do it? Anyway, that's enough of that. Public enemy or public enema? Sorry, Jamie, we're, we're going on tangents, but that's what we do. Um, anyway, they get back in the car, they start driving, and they look, they discuss that we need more food, more water. Brian starts nodding off, so Daniel says, look, I'll, I'll drive you sleep. Unlike um, in the Mouth of Madness, there is no car <laughs> horn hidden in this one. <laughs> oh, it's Sam Neil with his little fucking Sam horn. Neil, you little bastard. His little clown Although, I'd have loved it if there was that reference in this. Uh, only a few people would have got it, but it is what it is. But yeah, so I, Brian... Uh, dude, if I can, I will slip that into a movie, but it is obviously ridiculous almost. No wonder she loses it. Um, they then get stopped at gunpoint by some soldiers. They're questioned, and they say to the uh, the African guy, Daniel, what are you doing with him? What's going on? And he says, oh, we're friends. We're helping each other. Um, do you guys have anything to eat? <laughs> Sorry. Imagine if in that mouth of madness was Sam Neill, and the whole time it's just him like with a whoopee cushion. And just uh, all the way through the movie, it's just little gags. He's like, uh, She looks, he says, have a look, with binoculars, pulls it out, and his little black rings around her or eyes. He says, Let's smell this flower on my jacket, and water squirts out of it. Do you want some chewing gum? It's a snapping chewing gum packet. It's just old school gags. I wish Jeff of Madness was just him just doing jokes the whole time. She takes her jacket off and goes off to the bathroom and he pours loads of itching powder in the back of her jacket. (laughs) Classic, is it? Sam Neill, the jokester. Spider in her cup of tea. Sam Neill, you naughty boy. Sorry. So anyway, they hang out at this village and it's a mixture of... Well, they say we're no longer soldiers, we were, but we don't see ourselves as that now. We see ourselves as more survivalists and we're going basically there's a war against the undead. We're fighting them and we're trying to help any survivors we can. Um, There is a place quite near here. um, That's where Daniel's son is. Daniel sort of talks to them and he says, look, this is where your son will be. 
and then Brian starts sort of having a bit of a fever he looks at the car and thinks should i drive off should i do it? and then he gets very ill and, and in real life he actually was very ill he had um malaria as we said and was in hospital for two weeks uh, he was four hallucin- days starts- from dying yeah that's pretty bad um he starts having terrible hallucinations and dreams about his wife and his kid and flashbacks to the plane and other stuff and he wakes up and he feels a bit better and that's fine and daniel says okay you're good now it's time to leave so they get back in the car and they head off again they do need some water for the engine though because again the car breaks down it's about the fourth time now it's broken down sadly you know they are working with what they've got um when they made this which is essentially the the story of the filmmakers but then and again we've seen this scene three or four times now They've got zombies slowly approaching them while they're filling up the water in the car, that and they manage to get away just in time. These two, these two, <clears> their <throat> journeys to get through whatever it takes with whatever obstacles come on their way, and just keep going. Is exactly is the filmmakers making this film? Is these two guys, isn't it? It really is. It is oh, yeah. that. Yeah, totally, totally. That's fucking that's some crazy shit out there, man. Life imitates art. Imitates life. Imitates art, my friend. Fart imitates. Oh, art imitates life. Yeah. Fart imitates strife. Um, they end up crashing the car because they swerve to avoid a zombie and they have to run because they get swarmed by some zombies. We get more machete action from Daniel the machete. He's just swinging that thing all over the place. And his machete as well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Then they set a tripwire with some old empty cans so they can try and catch some sleep near a campfire. Yeah. And this is where they sort of bond a little bit. They discuss that they both got children um, and... They start to try and get to sleep, but they're attacked by zombies. And Daniel is bitten. And I've written, I am gutted, because we know he's going to die. And uh, he's actually probably my favourite character out of the two. Um, they do manage to fight them off, though. And Daniel is dying. Um, it, it by- did help breaking up, I think, the story, having him come into it and go out of it. Uh, yeah. But I think, yeah, maybe a bit more of him. Yeah, he, he's a good character, compelling. Um, but Brian then carries his body. Um, well, he, as he's dying, he carries him, and then he, he finally he dies. Um, Brian carries on on his own. Then he's thinking of his family. He finds a, a dying woman who gives him her baby. Um, so he shoots her in the head um, because you know she's. Bit, I think she's been bitten. Well, she, uh, so she says, um, "I can't run anymore. The zombies are coming. Just take my baby." He's like. I don't want a baby lady, but it's a bit like, oh, okay, I'll take I couldn't even baby. look after the last guy, and he I'll, had a machete. I'll take what your baby with, baby with me, but this is this is why it's like a game again. It's just like, you know, you imagine this sort of thing happening. And uh, she t- says, can you shoot me? So he just shoots her. Yeah. He gives <sighs> the baby to a passing car of survivors who, who take it, you know, obviously. And then he wanders alone. And at this point, I've I've noted... It is going on a little bit now. We want it kind of wrapped up a little bit now. Um, as beautiful as these, you know, and they're making the most of these um, backgrounds and, 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 you know, scenery. I, I tell you what, sorry to interrupt again. Uh, I, have you ever seen Shogun's Assassin? I know it's a combination of two other films. It's Baby Cartons River 6 or whatever. Uh, have you seen Shogun's Assassin? Yeah, yeah. I kind of wanted to, this to be the same film, but Zombies him get the baby early on the reason i've seen it is because of the wu-tang clan because of, of one course, of yeah, yeah. the jizz's album samples it heavily doesn't it yeah, yeah. um so, yeah. Yeah. my um, father was the greatest samurai in all the greatest of, samurai yeah. in all of japan so i'd have loved this to have been him with a, a baby most of the time just fighting off zombies like um what's the chow yun fat movie is it hard boiled it's hard boiled Re- yeah same fucking same great thing. i'd have loved to have seen this as zombies i think it could have been done Hard Boiled is such a great movie. There's a scene in it that I don't even question. I've only seen it once. I can't remember, but I know it's very good. He lets the baby piss on a fire to put it out while he's shooting guys. That is how badass Chai Young Fat is. Yeah, it's a a really fun film. John Woo, man. He was... Yeah. Um, Yeah, so... Uh, he finds a zombie, uh, and it's a zombie wearing all the black robes that um, he was wearing in the opening scene. So we know we're going to come back to that scene now because he kills that zombie, puts on those robes. Yeah, it's a nice callback for us to go, ah! We're back to the start now. Um, and he arrives looking all cool. He's got a gun and a machete in slow motion. It, 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 sorry, did you say about the fact that he gave the baby 
to yes, the truck. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which was kind of weird to bring the baby in and the baby goes straight away. It's a bit like, okay, that's what's like, you, we could have pulled that thing for, look, you don't actually have to have a baby. You can have something immaterial with the sound of baby crying. It's very easy to do. But yeah. we could have kept that going for a bit longer, I felt. And there's a similar scene in the next one, but they go more extreme. And it's very, very good. And my wife was, my wife watched this, by the way, what both of these um, was absolutely, and it's not, I don't, she's really, in the last couple of years, really got into horror because she just watches it with me <laughs> while she's, she's had children. She's, <laughs> she, she's, she's honestly, she'll sit there either working, um, you know, she works quite she late with her to, job. She needs to relieve that tension. Or she's crocheting or something, you know, and, and she'll just be like, and I don't even realise she's really into it. And then she'll go, fucking hell, that, the credits were all like on this. She went, that was so good. Uh, and particularly the scene in the next one, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we come to it. Um, we're coming to the end now. So um, he gets to a radio and radios someone who then replies. And he's it's somebody that he knows. And he said, like, the world's pretty fucked, Brian. Let's be honest. Did you say about him climbing in a tree for a rest? Uh, oh, yeah, he climbs up in a tree. This was the, one of the directors. I'd be so worried that I was just going to fall out. And he drops his gun at one point, and it's yes. kind of wait till the morning, because it's kind of like, well, a zombie can't get me. So it's like, fair enough, wait till the morning, then get down when no one's coming. Because you got the best thing about a tree is the advantage point of looking around you at 360. That's really good. Uh, a snakes and shit or anything like that might be a problem. But, um, or a lion. Yeah, possibly. But... It, uh, what do you reckon the, zo- the old lions are thinking in Africa right now with the fucking zombies? Are they going, Fred? Because obviously there's Fred and Barney, which are like the Flintstones, but they're lions. They're, right. they're, they're friends, they hang out. And they're both like, Fred, look over there. It's a human. There's no one around. Is it a trap? Don't think so, Barney. Right. There's another one there. They're not going fast. They're going really, really slowly. Actually, that one's already there's got like loads 20. Of it. Yeah, and they seem to be trying to eat each other. Do we eat them, or we could get like mad cow's disease, mad human's disease? And then they go, Oi, Jeff. Because there's always go eat, Jeff. Go and eat one of them. And then Jeff turns into yeah, a zombie Jeff, lion, and they're like, nah, Jeff's the we're stupid not eat them. line, though, isn't he? Everyone always picks on Jeff and make him do the stupid things. So, so Jeff, reckon... you go eat one, and let's we watch Jeff for the next 12 hours. If he has an issue, we won't do it. And then Jeff turns into a zombie lion, and they're like, Yeah, fuck that. Because yeah, that, does that happen, listeners? Do zombies. Lions turn into zombies if they eat zombies. Um, well, we had a tiger zombie in the you, Army of the Dead. True. you got to think, though, I guess. I do remember that now. you got to think, though, all the wildlife, the gnarly wildlife likes would eat humans, must have a field day with zombies. Yeah. Yeah. Just thought of that. Never thought of that. The whole zombie genre ever. Never thought how great the, the wildlife would have it with eating humans. As long as they don't turn... If it's passed only from human to human, they're okay. But they, they don't know. They're animals. They're still getting... Or would they sniff it out and be like, that's not right? They might sniff it out. So he's on the radio to his buddy, and his buddy's saying, look, don't come here. There's no point. You know, we're trapped in this base, but they're surrounding us outside, and you can hear the noise of these zombies breaking through, and they're like, they're breaking through the walls, Brian. They're breaking down the walls. And then Brian realises they're breaking down the walls of the base. He's in as well with all the survivors. Everyone gets killed. Brian seems to give up. He, just, he sort of steps out in slow motion into the sunlight, watching this chaos around him. And then he sees Daniel's son. He recognises him by the necklace that Daniel keep, described. Keep thinking of Karate Kid all the time. You are? Daniel's son. I keep thinking of Karate Kid. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Um, and it ends with Brian standing shoulder to shoulder with Daniel's son. And... That's it. You pretty much presume they're going to be eaten by zombies. Not a happy ending. Yeah. What can I say, <laughs> really? But I don't really want a happy ending. I'm quite I'm quite happy. It's just a story of a guy that made it a couple of hundred miles across Africa, only to still be pretty fucked. <clears throat> yeah, totally. You know, it's it's a it's it's the thing with zombie films. There's some films you could do it, and we've seen it a million times, where we don't get a reason 
why we don't know why they're zombies especially the zombie genre yeah, what and that's happened what we don't to get them told, do we? no we no, no and it concludes with us not knowing and if if anything actually happened it's really the actual adventure itself and there's loads of it's the journey there. jack gab isn't it the not journey. the destination it's the journey and that is also these fucking crazy masochistic fucking film directors for them it's the journey um, just a few bits of trivia, and then we'll sort of wrap it up. Then um, all the but, special but effects. All in all, sorry, all in all, I do give it a thumbs up. But like, it is a little same all. So, like, it doesn't. It kind of stays the same. If anything, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I watch both. I only watch one. I'm going to say just watch part two because they're not related. It's the same yeah, story in different. It's, it's pretty much a remake almost, but done a little bit better, a little bit punchier. Yeah. In a, in a different city, in a different country. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, just very quickly, just to fill in some blanks, um, they didn't use any safety gear when he climbed that rock quarry, as I mentioned, because he was still under the uh, influence does, of the malaria. Does, does it say that we, did, we didn't have insurance either? <laughs> the budget or anything like that, um, they shot all the opening scenes in the in the opening scenes in the desert and the closing scenes on the last day of shooting. They must have been so happy, and that's why he looked so shattered in those scenes. Um, they cast uh, multiple amputees as zombies. Uh, all special effects were done in camera. So that head crush with the fire extinguisher, the head squash with the car. Don't know how they did it all, but they did it all in camera and it looks great. And it just goes to show practical effects still rock- fucking rule, absolutely. Can we hire this effects artist? Yeah. Jesus. If he could do that under that conditions, you know. The only bits that were shot not in Africa were anything in the plane. That was all shot in England. Um, they had a, an inside hollowed out plane um, that they used in England where they shot all the plane scenes. But yes, so going back to what you said, I also give this a thumbs up. Um, it's not a must watch. It's not like one that you should go out of your way to go watch. But when you do, if you do catch it or you now are inspired to watch it, you won't regret it. it prepare yourself for a, a slow, a slow burn. It does perhaps drag a little bit at times but now you perhaps know the story behind it you might appreciate just exactly what in what, what went into this really because like uh, weirdly until you said it i didn't realize like the story of these two guys is kind of the story of the two brothers really you know the car breaks down they they run out of water they run out of this they run out of that someone stops them someone attacks them then they have to come across this obstacle that obstacle and it is kind of like art imitating life like we said so mm. Yeah, uh, it's it's great. Um, and one film that I never thought we'd talk about, really. Um, it's a film I've that I've only forgotten. seen once before. I'd forgotten about the film. Yeah, I'd seen it once before, and it comes up occasionally on lists of zombie films or podcasts that are sort of talking about low-budget zombie films. It's definitely one of the better low-budget zombie films. The effects artist has gone on to do The Martian, and he's just done effects on the recent Venom movie. movie. Wow, he pretty interesting. Uh, the sound mix was completed by BAFTA nominated Adam and Graham Daniel. Hmm. And the book, once again, guys, is called Surviving the Dead. It came out in 2012. And it's basically the diary um, of everything that went on for the 12 days that they were there. Uh, 12 weeks they were there. They were supposed to be there for six weeks. And they ended up staying twice as long with less money than they thought. So check that book out as well. Um but yeah, thumbs up from both of us. Yeah, thumbs up. Um, like I said, though, it's a wee bit of a slow one because it feels yeah. a little bit like that. Like it didn't. Sarah wasn't like blown away by the film. She thought it was alright, you know. So, um, but like I said, uh, second one's pretty decent actually. So mm. we should. Uh, well, should we? Uh, should we? Oh, who's that? Is that Bill? Where? What? Oh, hello, mate. You right? Yeah. Yeah, before Ghostbusters are right, you missed us talking about it. I think that's quite rude, because we told you to come early so you could listen to us talking about Ghostbusters. Well, you didn't come. So. You look great in it, Bill. Yeah, you, no, looked you like, did. Yeah, you looked like you cared as well, so well yeah. done. Well done. I like My favourite scene was the little whiskey bottle shot. That was good. Good fun. Peter, very is, Peter Bengman. I apologise. I need to watch it again. I've kind of forgotten a lot of it. I don't know why. There we go. Sorry. All right, well, uh, Bill, now you're finally here. Um, do you want to... Lead us into our next segment, please. Go on, Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. 
spread of the strand. Thank you, Bill. And they've done that voice. Thanks, Bill. A very good voice. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, well, unrelated completely to um, zombies or, or anything like that, mm. I have something that I came across the other day. I'm a big superhero fan, as you know, Gav. Yep. You know, love love wearing lycra. I've seen um, the pictures. And I thought it'd be interesting. To, <laughs> I'm already laughing to take a look at some real life superheroes. Now these are people that you can Google. There's the pictures of them. People that act- actively go out there in costumes. Not, not people actively and actually have powers and they can fly. Not powers, but some. A lot of them have weapons. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go through this. There's a list here. I'm going to. How many have you got here? Well, there, there's a few. There's a few. It's going to be like ten to fifteen. I might skip some of them. Okay. I'll start with Zeta Man. Z e t a Man. Zeta Man, with a big Z on his chest or a Z on his chest. This is a man that takes his role very seriously, and he patrols the streets of Portland, armed with a steel baton. It's like two meters long, and a thirty thousand volt taser. And he roams the streets looking for citizens that need help. He's never had to use his weapons, but he's always prepared to fight off criminals to try and stir things up. Basically, he's become a bit of a celeb. So if there's, like, trouble, he just sort of walks into the alleyway and's like, leave them alone. And they're like, oh, shit, it's Zeta Man. He's got a massive stick and a taser. But he's also, like, a slightly overweight 40-year-old man with a goatee. He doesn't wear a mask. He's got, like, a Lycra suit on, but he doesn't wear a mask. Single. I should imagine. Uh, I listened to very quickly. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I listened to a podcast. I can't remember which one podcast it was. And so, uh, listeners, I like, sent in a story, or whatever. And they said that they they were um, almost getting mugged one night, and this quite a big person. And they would be like, oh, "What the fuck?" And all of a sudden, they heard like the sounds of wheels, and they turned around. It was someone on an electric skateboard, and in like superhero type sort of thing, like whatever, fucking a mask, whatever. And if, if I fucking had a battle, saying, like, "Beat the shit out of this." P- bad person and the person's like oh uh, wow uh, okay, okay do you know what I mean like, that's amazing and then they kind of looked at them and they like, just nodded them to go off and they went off whatever and they they were like I don't know what happened uh, I I don't know if he continued and ended up killing the person or what I have no idea but he, the guy was fucked <laughs> Jesus Christ it's just like weirdest imagine that you're just about to get mugged all of a sudden a skateboard rolls up and someone just beats the fuck out of them with a mask and a wave up like uh, 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 thank you well I think you're going to like the next superhero Am just I? by the name alone this is an Australian superhero he's called Wheel Clamp Man I, uh, is it like parking meter man or do you know what I mean I, I know where we're going with this is he helping the people who have had clamps put in their cars well, let's let's have a look at his. Oh, uh, he's 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 my hero. He operates in the city of Perth in Australia, and he travels the city, removing clamps from drivers' wheels, wearing a disguise, which is a fake moustache, a green bowler hat, a red mask like the Riddler. I was about to green, say he's a old school Batman, isn't it? A green light like, suit and a green helmet, hat, bowler hat type thing, um, and he just basically, if he sees a car that's been clamped by the government. Just just pops it off. I got, and runs runs off into the night. My 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 commentary on this one is a bit of a, like this particular individual. How many cars are clamped per mile? Not many. Probably not many. <clears throat> What's he doing in between? Living in his mum's basement. He's just up and down the road all day long, waiting. Only comes out at night though. And he comes out and oh, okay, so I guess it's the cars that have been there, so it might be easy to get around. Okay, but you imagine in the morning you're like, you come but, out, and you're like, oh, the clamp's gone, and there's a note saying, you're what, welcome. But what if you don't even appreciate it because you don't even know your car got clamped because he's taken off? But like, you might not know. Yeah, you have no idea, and you just drive off, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, you could have thanked me for what? <laughs> your car was. I could just tell people that your car was clamped, and I took off. What? Your car yeah, was but clamped. he leaves, I should imagine he leaves the clamp lying there. You know, like snapped into. Yeah, but I could just take a cl- snap clamp, put it next to a car, charge people. Where are you getting snapped clamps? I've got a fucking garage of snap clamps. 
I would then charge against a tenner. I did that. A tenner, tenner. It cost you hundred, dear boys. Tenner. Brilliant. Well, the next person on the list is called, and this is a good name, the Crimson Fist. <laughs> Cho- choice of name is a uh, is a uh, interesting. Mm. What does the Crimson Fist do? He's a very special man who discovered his is. superhero persona. He is to some. He's, he discovered that he had a superhero persona after years of drug and alcohol abuse. <laughs> is he like the brown bottle in the Viz comic? <laughs> by day, he's an IT programmer. Yeah. And by night, he spends his time helping the homeless, handing out supplies like bottled water, socks and food, oh, using his good. own money. Oh, that's, that's cool. But why is he the Crimson Fist? Maybe it's, a, image... maybe it's a, a party conversation. Stop the image opener. on his chest is like a red symbol with like blood coming off of it. Do, do you think when he's at parties, like just saying I'm a superhero enough, it's not enough to start this conversation? I'm going to say that I'm the Crimson Fist. Yeah, no, yeah, he's got a big fist. Probably has. Big fist on his chest. Well, Gav, you know you, Will Clamp Man? Yeah. There's an English version. He's called Angle Grinder Man. I was going to say something else about Crimson Fist, I can't remember now. Angle Grinder Man. Well, he could be the brown fist, and that's something completely different. I oh, wasn't. It wasn't even to do with fisting. Angle grinder man, superhero operating in England. He patrols at night again, looking for unhappy drivers that've been clamped, and he sets their car free. Wait, wait, what town's this in? Uh, it doesn't actually say. Um, it's just it looks like England. it's up north. But basically, he takes off clamps. He cuts down speed cameras, Fuck and he's now. Out. And he's now trying to take on the congestion charge. Oh, so he's London. So that is Angle Grinder Man. Well, well, you do have, uh, if you don't know... Oh, I was going to say about Viz. Oh, that's what I was going to say, about the brown bottle. If you don't know, Viz is a British comic, which is a rude comic, which when you were a kid and you had one, you thought you were very naughty and you'd have to hide them with your porn collection, funny enough. Um, but the brown bottle is this guy who, just when he gets drunk, he turns into a superhero. It's fucking amazing. Um, ankle grinder guy. This is the next one. Is a guy from Florida. Oh, hang on, ankle grinder guy. So he, that's it. He just cuts down speed cameras and takes off oh, wheel clamps. That's what I was gonna say. In London, uh, um, uh, recently, we past year or so, we've had the congestion charge. Um, no, it's the not congestion charge. It's a congestion charge. No, it is a congestion charge. Yeah. I thought it was the other one. There's another charge. Oh, fucking hell, I can't remember. It was extended loads, um, so loads of people pissed off with it. So they started cutting the cameras down, all left, right, and centre. And that's Angle Grinder Man. Yeah, could well be. Well, here's the next one. He's from Florida, so already we're, we're on to a winner here. Um, he's called Superhero. That's his name. What, what are your thoughts on the name? Original? At parties, he's confusing. So you're a superhero. What's your name? Superhero. No, I know that. What's your name? Superhero. What? My name is superhero, but you're a superhero called superhero. Yeah. Superhero. Right. That's my name. Well, he it's drives... to the point. It's, I quite like it. Do you then say, yo, super? What he does is he drives around in wearing lycra. He's a really big buff guy. So what, what is it with a lycra? Is it for aerodynamicy? Perhaps yeah. superheroes. You can, you can stretch and bend. Sexiness. They just want to show their buttocks. All of it. All of it. Well, he drives around in a, a red 1975 Corvette, helping stranded motorists and teaching young people about road safety. <laughs> Pedo. Fucking hell. He kind of looks a bit like one. <laughs> If I'm, looking, I'm looking at the picture of now what you guys you know you can google these guys as, as I'm saying them but the picture of him he does have a bit of a weird grin on his face okay well let's move on to Cincinnati shadow hair <laughs> H-A-R-E is I've always been like shadow head or something shadow hair the shadow hair started life as a crime fighter in 2005 in Cincinnati He's become widely known throughout the news and various videos up to and including 2009, all the way up through 2012. There's no thoughts on what he does, but he goes around on a scooter looking for trouble. But I don't think he's never done anything. He's just been spotted in his weird costume. This is just some autistic kid. Like, a shadow hair. Yeah, the shadow hair. Yeah, bless him, bless him. 
I don't, I don't, yeah, let them do their little thing. Let's come back to the UK. This is the coolest name. Right. The, the Flashing Blade. The Flashing Blade. That sounds better than Shadow Hair. Back in 2007, a mysterious crusader appeared out of nowhere and helped the police catch some criminals on a street in South Shields, which is near Newcastle in the UK. Apparently, this man, known as the Flashing Blade, ran up to an armed gang who were about to attack two unarmed detectives. He slashed frantically with a three-foot sword, cutting one of the gang members on the arm, and then vanished off into the night. Wow. The, the gang were panicked by this. Uh, <laughs> they gave themselves up. The police arrested them on the spot. Tears a bunch of crackheads went back and started to just get the sweats and panicking. Fucking hell, come six o'clock. Come on, let's get down to the cop shop. What I want to know is why a man is walking around South Shields with a three-foot sword. Just looking like, actually, are there any cops I can help right now? Why has he got a sword that big? Mm. Apparently, he's described as five foot ten white in his 40s with a moustache okay it's always, it's always the white guys serial killer's always white who else have we got we've got Mr. Extreme it sounds like a fucking lap, lap dancer or a wrestler or a wrestler a or a wrestler, a wrestler in daytime lap, lap, lap dance at night hang on what lap dancing clubs are you going to where you're like next on stage is Mr. Extreme <laughs> and I don't say that I go to them whenever I spring something up uh, 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 a profession in the world of sex or something like that it doesn't mean that I, I participate in such profession with, with the, the changing of hand of money the changing of hand of money <laughs> Mr. Extreme is an American real-life superhero who fights crime in San Diego, California. He's also the leader and the founder of the Extreme Justice League. Wow. Which, ga which gained attention through the Real Life Superhero Project and its website. He says, the inspiration for my suit is from the Power Rangers. <laughs> is it now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's wearing like a green, bright, luminous green. You know, like Mountain Dew green. Yeah. He's got that colour green suit on with a helmet and goggles. He looks like something out of Kick-Ass, you know, the movie Kick-Ass. Mm. He looks like something out of that. It's yeah, the first time I ever tried Mountain Dew. I was actually up a mountain. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah. don't remember the first time I tried it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was up, not like one particular mountain. I wasn't mountain climbing. It was like a very big bit. I was a, a stain somewhere, but it was a high up in the mountain sort of thing. Well, here's another good name for you, though, for the next one on the list Master Legend. Not Master Beta. No, Master Legend. His enemy is Master Beta. Master Legend sounds like an 80s uh, DJ, hip hop DJ. Yeah. He sounds like a Wu Tang Clan DJ that occasionally. Does one Master of their Legend, songs. Yeah, yeah, comes in, does little. Basically, when they say Wu Tan's playing tonight, you go, "Oh, amazing! This will go down there." It's one member you've never ever heard of rapping, and and this DJ we're talking of. He does a lot of charity work and says, "I will help anyone who needs my aid." But again, I have no other information on him other Is than he, he looks like, like Robocop. I'm... He looks like Robocop, and he's got a massive metal baseball bat. What do you mean he looks like Robocop? Has he got eye no eyebrows? No, he's got like um like a Robocop suit on, it looks like. Oh. Master Legend. He's he's just a fucking rapper. Guaranteed. Well, we just talked about Africa, so let's talk about an African superhero. What's he called? Lionheart. I love it. That, that's that's authentic. Name. It's authentic. That's and that name, means that. that he's like he's passionate, he's awesome. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I am Lionheart. Hear me roar. You can imagine him sort of. Yeah. Well, apparently he roams his many villages in the is uh, where he lives, um, helping people, saving people's lives. Kind of vigilante. Teaching people the importance of appreciating the simple things in life. And he apparently can fend off a lion and he teaches people how to prevent lion attacks. It's never been seen him fight a lion, of course. Yeah. I can't imagine he'd come off very well against the lion, let's be honest. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, Lionheart from Africa. You say? Sounds great. 
<laughs> it does sound pretty impressive. It is a good night name choice. So is that your winning name at the moment, Lionheart? Oh, no. No. Is but... Will Clamp Man is your favourite? <laughs> it could be. Okay. What about the Night Warrior? The Night Warrior sounds like a fucking serial killer. Sounds like the Night Stalker. He's from Manchester in England. Oh, God. What's he up to? His his mission statement on his website <laughs> is, my mission is to kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of gum. Dude, get a life. <sighs> is that... Honestly? That's what's on his website. Okay. There's a guy who... You're not going to like this one. He's called The Geist. As in Poltergeist, but just The Geist. Okay. And he lives... He lives in Rochester, New York, and his goal is to pre- prevent crime and to stop all graffiti artists. What's, what's, what's wrong with graffiti artists? The guys doesn't like them. Now, he wears a duster, a really long duster coat, big boots, and a cowboy hat with a mask over it. Oh, so he looks, I, he looks badass. He, but he, looks, he sounds like a bit of a tool. Well, here's a really good one from from Helsinki, Finland. <clears throat> okay. His his name is Dex Laser Skater. Dex Laser Skater. <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. Oi, are you gonna go see Dex later? Dex who? Dex Laser Skater. Oh yeah, definitely gonna see Dex later. Uh, skater. Uh, he wears giant pants, basically. <laughs> Under or over? Just pants and a like a training bra, it looks like. Um, and then has like a bandolier full of badges or down it. He's in a synth wave band, isn't he? Um, he's also a model. Of course he is. But he models in character. As uh, Dex Laser Skater. And he's been known to help tourists when they're lost. He also makes sure people tip their waiters. Right, I'm going to look up Dex Laser Skater. Please look him up. Dex, D-E-X. Oh, that's no, all right, I got it. What is the laser, S or Z? An S. I want you to see this man. He looks like... I don't know what he looks like, but you're going to... I really can't wait to hear you. The image I'm looking at, he's holding on to like a metal pole, looking over to the right. <laughs> Tell us what you see. Oh, I've just seen Dexter Laser Skater, and it's, it's, a, oh my god, isn't that, oh, there's a video of it, oh my god. Okay, he looks like a pedo, no offence, he's in, he roller boots, and his little, yep. we were showing his little bum cheeks and little white pants, and he looks like he's kind of from a future, yeah. in a really bad movie, but that, put some trousers on. Why has he got so many cups around his waist? Why has he got, look. Oh, I'm looking at his bum as he skates along. I don't want to see that. Well, there we go. That's Dex Laser Skater. What the fuck? Happy with that? He has 2,116 followers on Instagram. At Dex Laser Skater. Shout out, Dex. Well, here's you another good do one. do look a little bit noncy, though, so just to say. Here's a great, um, a great name, the next one. Back to Oz now. Captain Australia. Yeah. Fucking great. There's Why Captain not? America. There's Captain Britain and there's Captain America. We need a Captain Australia as well. What's so. Captain Britain? Captain Britain. Brian Braddock. He's one of the X-Men. Did you know Captain Britain? No. In in X-Men, there's a British version called the Executioners. No, Excalibur. And Nightcrawler and Captain Britain and a few other people are in it. He's Brian Braddock. Yeah, I love the fact that you say that. I guarantee a lot of our listeners are like, no, I've never heard of Captain Britain. A lot of people have heard of Captain Britain, particularly because at the moment, Henry Cavill is heavily rumoured to be playing him for the uh, MCU. Right. I, I, no idea. But I've always been a big Captain Britain fan. Anyway, Captain Australia... He spent two years, he's retired now, but he spent two years fighting crime in Brisbane. Okay. Um, but for some reason, he's vanished and his website has been taken down and his YouTube account has been disabled. <laughs> What's he done? <laughs> Fucking hell, Captain Australia. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? What have they found? <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, there's a brilliant one in Hong Kong here. 
She's called the Bahuinia Heroine. Okay. She basically has watched way too many uh, anime and Jackie Chan movies. She's wearing like a, a cloak, black. She looks like Trinity from The Matrix, but she's got like a cloak as well. Okay. Uh, she's a masked woman in Hong Kong, making headlines all over the country, distributing food and money to the homeless and the poor at night. Um, uh, she's also been known to stop the odd crime here and there. Um, she says her appearance is inspired by Black Rose, which is a 1965 film. Um, and they are now going to be making a film of her. So I guess she'll get some money. Um, and then the last one, you've heard of Thanos, haven't you? Uh, or for, or for uh, the, uh, the Avengers. Old Avengers, yeah. Mm-hmm. The last one is a Greek... Um, the Greek guy. Well, he's actually in Canada, but he's based on a Greek legend. He's called Thanatos. Okay. So the personification of death itself. And he's a 65-year-old fellow from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, he roams the... Uh, the, the streets in a long black or sort of grim reaper you know like the undertaker would wear in wrestling yeah he's got a suit uh, basically wearing that outfit but with a green skull mask and a tie with skull and crossbones all down it and apparently he says death better get out there and start taking care of these people right that's that bit of a weird catchphrase but um just thought you'd like that <laughs> Well, you've got some fantastic ones there. I died Dex Laser Skater's name. I don't like it what I saw. The Flashing Blade is good. Flashing Blade's good. Shadow Hair's a bit weird. Uh-huh. Uh, the Crimson Fist, good name. Crimson Fist, I don't, well, it's a good name in some circles. Bill Clampman. Angle Grinder Man. Superhero. That's your least favourite then, is it? Isn't uh-huh. it? And Captain Australia, what have you done, you naughty boy? What have you been up to? What have you been cancelled? Um... And then obviously we had uh, Mr. Extreme as well. Um, <laughs> you're going to make it. You're going to make a really shit Avengers movie. Master Legend. Who, oh, don't forget Lionheart. We can't forget Lionheart, the African one. He yeah. might be my favourite. I guess so. Um, but there we go. So Gav, that leads me to my final point and question here: is if you were going to be a superhero, what would your powers be, and what would your name be? If I was going to be a, power, uh, a superhero, what would my name and powers be? Do you have an answer for this already? I don't really, yeah, but I'm going to think it. I'll just go with Gavatron. I love it. Uh, that's powers. a bit close to your real name, though, so if they were like, who is this Gavatron? Yeah, but that's, that's, a, yeah, that's like Clark Kent with a fucking pair of glasses and they can't tell it's Superman. Yeah, but he's, he's not called Clark Superman, is he? Yeah, but he's only wearing a pair of glasses. It's not exactly that fucking different. Okay. So I would do that. I, my Gavatron would be take my glasses off. My eyes are lasers. Fuck me, you'd be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you I'm sure. When my when my glasses come <laughs> off, it's just lasers <laughs> until so I put cyclops. them back on. So you're Cyclops. That's so, exactly Cyclops's power from so the X Men. Essentially, I'm sh- dangerous as fuck because I'm short sighted. So you know basically, that, I'm wandering around, burning fucking anything. Cats saying, "Meow." I've gone. You know that that is Cyclops from the X Men. He's got. He cannot stop these red optic blasts coming out of his eyes, which is why he wears that weird visor. Uh, mine's the other way around, though. When I take the glasses off, it's just literally constant. I go, "Meow." But that's the same as him. Meow. That's why he wears the visor because if he doesn't have that on, he's constantly just blowing shit up around that, him. That's me. So you're Cyclops's powers, and you're called Gavatron. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Cyclops is one of my favourite X-Men, so that's pretty decent. Also, though, I've got a real bad drinking problem. It's not for drama, it's more for comedy, because when I take it off, I'm short-sighted and drunk, wandering around, burning shit for a laugh. Christ. Come here, little birdie, you know. Wow, wow. <laughs> it's dark, it gets dark. It's the 18-type, okay. it's like, it's like that... Uh, Oh, that dude that's been in the movie out this year, Deadpool. It's like him. Christ, that is a dark one. So you're just frying animals? Not necessarily animals, people too. I'm, I'm going to literally go... <laughs> yeah, I'm literally... No, no, it gets so dark that I'm burning babies. It's that dark. Well, fuck you, no. it's, I wish... I don't understand how we've got here. It is dark. 
Is Ryan Reynolds with you in this then? Is he? Oh, I mean, no, he's an enemy. Really, we were we were friends once. But no. what's yours? I can't know. I don't even know what to say after all that. Uh, Dynamite Dan. Ooh. Yeah. Because when I was a kid, I wanted to be a wrestler, and that was my my name that I always used to say. So Dynamite Dan. I think um, my powers would probably have to be. I'd be really good at like every type of martial art there is, but also a bit a bit like Deadpool, I guess, or Wolverine. Like I, I get hurt, but I heal really quickly. So like I can, I'm pretty much indestructible. So I'm taking out like I'm a bit of a John Wick and taking out loads of guys at the same time. And you're like, here comes Dynamite Dan. You know? Can it be? He's got a short, like, fuse. He's got a short fuse, Dynamite Dan. Can it be? It's what I'm going with. Can it be that you've actually got a level on your front? It's in your forehead. You've got a level. And it's red. And it's actual level on your head, and it goes white, yellow to red. And when it gets to red, you actually explode. Wow. You actually explode and take everybody out of a 10 mile radius, but then. T1000 back together. Back together again. But it's I a like really that. painful problem. And every time it happens, your penis goes a centimetre smaller, a millimetre so smaller. So I'm basically a suicide bomber, is what you're saying. Yeah, which gets a smaller penis each time it happens. I've got a shit. So really... The shit. <laughs> right, I don't want this. Right, so really, you're trying not to let your head explode because it does make your other head smaller so each I'm, time. I'm, so I'm yeah. like the Hulk, but instead of getting too angry and... <laughs> yeah, and being, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just explode, kill Basically, everyone around me. you're the Hulk, but your dick gets smaller each time it happens. So you're really have trying... Got, how have I got this end of the deal? Because you're you fucking what, laser eyes yeah, over there. Otherwise you're like, I'm the man that can do every fucking martial art. I mean, she could just shoot and kill everybody. No problem and it's it gets boring for the audience if they know there's a, a situation and your girlfriend who you love is in a situation where she's like please don't let your head explode because your willy's getting smaller even unless it's more it's yeah, getting Gav, really I think she'd small be, i think she'd be more worried about the fact that i'm gonna kill her and take out the whole building we're in but it's only if she gets angry yeah so that is the downside. So I'm really badass yeah. and i can heal from a lot of things but yeah. if there's like so, 20 guys fighting me you might have might to get times. pushed too much you might be going like right guys my dick's getting small for this what <laughs> <laughs> i'm willing to take a millimeter off for you lot get ready <laughs> what's he on about what's that little light his head doing that means his dick's gonna get smaller what cut, that means he's gonna explode yeah uh, cinematically then it just cuts from me going Arr! and then it just cuts to the outside of a building no music all silent and then the whole building just goes and then slowly all this goop gets back together and it's me yeah so i'm sorry about that i i am an alcoholic and it does become a problem eventually. And you are killing babies after a while it becomes a problem and i do go to aa and i get off it but i do get a serious crack habit later on down the line maybe we team up and i help you with your um your substance abuse issues yeah i'm just selling selling my fire for crack and you, and you help me yeah. keep my a cool head and we're a bit like um see no evil hear no evil because <laughs> you've got the, the shades on i know i'm pissed i'm just like blind oh god <laughs> and i just can't get you angry you're like you're making me angry with stop so being you're, so you're it, Richard rubbish Pryor. yeah you, 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 stop <laughs> annoying me you make i can't help it i'm blind and i'm drunk <laughs> I'm a drunk blind man. Brilliant. Gavatron and Dynamite Dam. I love it. Let's do it. Anyway, that's that. Oh, the strange. Bill. Get what would your superpower be? No. No, being invisible. No, that's not a good reason to use going invisible. Come on, Dandy. Let's get out of here. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though. Give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird. Mr. Nicholas, why did you come to India? I'm an engineer. I was offered a contract. We build wind farms. Purest source of energy, you know? Opportunity of a lifetime. It's such a beautiful place. Maybe I was looking for a fresh start. Nicholas, I'm pregnant. There's something wrong! This 
Shani, where are you right now? I'm at home. Stay where you are. I'm coming for you. It may take me some time, but uh, I'll get to you somehow. Something terrible is going on. People are, uh, people are being attacked. I think it's happening every day. So just stay indoors, lock yourself in. I'm coming for you. And for our baby. You're never gonna see my daughter again! I'm the best guy in India. See their eyes. There is no soul. Whatever happens, you must follow your heart. The Dead Two, India. From uh, 2013. An infectious epidemic spreads through India as an American turbine engineer learns that his pregnant girlfriend is trapped near the slums of Mumbai. Now he must battle his way across 300 mile wasteland of the ravenous dead, or undead, sorry. There we go. Again, directed by the Ford brothers, written by them. Um,. Uh, so kind of, you know, this one is a better film. Yeah, they've um, the first they one learned. was a tester. It feels yeah. like um, yeah. kind of like the first one. I think the conditions are actually shitter, um, a lot shitter, a lot more like illness. Um, their money being taken from them. Um, I think this one is still not good. Still had to sell their way to get out of situations at times. Um, <clears throat> But I think, yeah, definitely did that. Obviously had some time from making it and then going, okay, we've editing, okay, make a right film. They said like the fan love for the first one helped them want to make another one. Um, yeah. yeah, just the whole thing. They, they've been able to like look at it and go, yeah, we, we this is what we need we need to do on this one and it will be better they they're more prepared it's just um and it's a better film the film is more the story is better they're better writers uh, yeah. uh, from the get-go a better story because it's really like it starts off with a main goal we've got our main hero oh yeah. a girlfriend uh pregnant needs to get to her it's a very simple premise but it, it's a main goal for our protagonist to follow uh, with obstacles along the way it's very easy for us to hear not saying the other one isn't but it feels more direct and more tighter they essentially wanted to recreate to try again um, and and succeed this time although they succeeded last time they wanted to have a smoother ride and they picked another country this time they said they wanted to choose a really beautiful spiritual part of the world so they chose in India obviously um, it's got some incredibly vibrant colours um, you know the, 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 the way the sun falls the clothing all the bright colours and dyes that are used and everything India is a very colourful beautiful looking place you know um and they wanted to go there and do this again not just because they wanted to do it again but because they wanted to it was almost like they needed to get it out of their system because they would had so much shit and it's kind of a bit of a ptsd i guess so they wanted to go back and try and you know clear clear their name as it were um but it doesn't mean they didn't encounter trouble because again they didn't get a single permit from the indian government so they were guerrilla filmmaking they would have gotten a lot of trouble if they'd been caught um there was a lot of harassment of the female um, cast members um, and crew 
Um, At least getting a permit, official, officials know you're there doing that if there is a problem. They can mm-hmm. sort of intervene or, or like step in possibly and bring in some sort of reinforcements or some description uh, because it is so guerrilla. It's literally them going, we're going to fucking just get through this and do this. Like I, mean, I said, there's total balls out both they're times. In the, they're in the slums of India, you know, where anything goes, um, shooting some of these scenes. And again, not a single real person really taught, spoke English uh, so they had to have translators with them at all times, which was another obstacle when it came to directing. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, you know, there's a few, a few of the cast that spoke English, some of the Indian cast spoke English, but not many of the extras did. Um, so there was that as well. Uh, and then there was the the scene, we'll get to the scene, but there's a scene where there's a very tense moment. But just before that scene had shot, a group of guys pulled up and basically said, started throwing stones at them and said, we're going to stone you to death unless you give us $600 um, to leave you alone. And they had to try and film the scene while these guys were like, you know, throwing stuff at uh, them and, and uh, threatening and the, them. The scene is really full on scene. It's, it's uh, in movies There's sometimes scenes. Uh, I won't forget the scene actually. This um, is a it's scene. Really, it, it's it's, it's, it's as... accepted and you kind of understand that that is the right thing to do. It's the humane thing to do, even though it's fucking, it's kind of the ending of the mist. It's a mist. Yes. Thank you. Because Alice watched we'll this get movie with me as well, and we will get to that scene. She was shocked at that scene, and I then we'll, I then described we'll, the we'll ending talk, of the mist to her. Yeah, we'll talk about it when we get to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, they had a lot of tension again, not as much as being in Africa, but this time there was there was still a lot of problems, um, and you know you're in you're in Mumbai, you're in parts of India that are a little bit unsanitary, so you're going to catch a few bits and bobs. Um, yeah. Ishani's mother, there's someone who's called Ishani. Oh, so it's the, the girl, the one who's pregnant. Her, his mother's real name is Poonam. Poonam. Hmm. That's right. Poonam. Hmm. The adverts over here for, for nappies are Poonami, they say, don't they? Um, so, uh, yeah, so they still had a lot of problems. But Jamie wanted to know what we thought of the style and the to change up in the way that they shot. Yeah, uh, Jamie's question is very, very particular, technical. There is it's frames per second, she said, and and uh, I didn't notice. I do apologise. Oh, did you not? No, I mean, the whole movie is in slow motion this this time around. Not the whole film. No, but but a lot of the scenes oh, a are lot of very slow. slow oh mode. yeah, no, I uh, yes, obviously I did notice that because um, I was actually going to say it's a very good way to make things look more epic and uh, uh, higher production is things like slow motion. It really just yeah. is. Um, um, I don't think there was a single use of slow mo in the first one that I can recall. Um, but this is where this is where okay, who has edited this one? I'm guessing it's going to be them. Uh, yes, he's edited it again. Howard did. So um, they've got better in their game. What have they done in between? You carry on talking. I want to see what they've done in between. Not a, nothing, really. They haven't really done an awful lot. They must have been doing some filmmaking of some description, though. Do you know what I mean? Mm. No, they did do stuff. They made some films. They made a movie called Adventure Boys. Oh no, this is before. Oh no, it didn't. Dead One, Dead Two. Straight away, 2010, 2013. Yeah, straight, straight to this. Adventure Boys, though, that's funny mm. because that played at Friday Fest, I remember. And they're still making movies. The other thing about this movie is not only does it look better than the first one, um, and that's, you know, saying something, um, it's a better story, as Gab's just said, but also the lead actor in it. Um, Played by Joseph Milson, he is phenomenal. He carries this this he, film. He, he's a bit fucking uh, Frank Grillo, isn't he? He's he is Frank Grillo, isn't he? He does look like him. He's, um, I think he's British, isn't he? And he's uh, really charismatic. He's got. He's a good actor. He doesn't seem to be a soldier, but well, he's not. He's a, a he's an engineer, but yeah. then he gets pushed into like being almost a soldier. He, he's. He's very adaptive as a as an actor, I think. Do you know what I mean? Or, or his character, the fact that it could go it is uh, the, the turbine uh, engineer to to soldier, and he looks fucking badass when he's on a motorbike, oops, yeah. flying through the desert. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know. he he is very well cast. He's better cast than the first one. Now, yeah. do you think 
we don't we can't find anything to do with the budgets unfortunately i know do you think the second one had a higher budget it, yes, I, re- I, I would say i would say yeah the first one was popular it but it made some money p- potentially mm-hmm. independently selling dvds possibly mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know if it's a cinema theatrical release um but yes, probably did have a higher budget, and they knew what they're doing more. And they're basically saying, "Look, we're going to kind of remake the movie, but we could do it better this time." I would say they took longer, um, just and, more prepared. It's just the yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Well, we say more prepared. They still didn't get any permits to film, but no, probably didn't have insurance. But that's it's cheaper, I guess, and they they got away with it and they did it. And I almost want to uh, try and find one of them. Just send him a message. Can I chat to you? I just want to not 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 having ways to to uh, not pay your cost, uh, feed your cost crew, and uh, not get uh, permits and not get insurance. Just intrigued. Did you have insurance? I'm so intrigued of your style because it's just like it's crazy. The the <clears throat> the actors in this are okay, but the, the 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 main guy in it, Joseph Milson, the actor's name is. He's incredible. Uh, the rest of the cast are okay, um, but. There's, I've got a big issue though with this film, and I'll get to it at the ending. <clears throat> there's, there's, there's one plot point I do not like, <clears throat> which we'll come to at the end. You might guess what it is, but um, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. All right. Opening shot. I get it, but I'm just saying I don't like it. Okay. Yeah. Opening shot is a lovely, uh, very small, just this just man on one of those one of those wind turbines, you know, yes. you know, ladies and gentlemen, a big fucking electrical uh, fan, fan making electrical from wind, obviously uh, uh, a farm like loads of them. <clears throat> we we pan out, we pan out, we pan out, we pan out to this little dot. Essentially, is the same engineer with this massive turbine farm in the background. And then, and then we're in a rural Indian village. Yep. There's lo- local music playing. We get all these slow motion shots of people hanging up their clothes on lines. Just does up the uh, production value a bit, doesn't it? Having this, the vivid colours, the bustling sort of atmosphere, the vivid colours. Um, you know, slow motion shots of people hanging up their laundry, and uh, just. It just looks beautiful. It just looks very Indian. You know, as Indian as you, you, when you think of India, this is what you see. Um, we see a queue of people getting their wages. So these men have obviously been at work. Uh, they're in a line and someone's handing them their wages. And one yep. of them is sort of <laughs> coughing a bit and he looks a bit under the, a little bit peaky, doesn't he? He's a little, doesn't look very well. Very quickly, I don't know if you said it because I might have been thinking about my cough at the time. Did you speak about the, the gentleman on the uh, wind turbine engineer? He, he has, uh, uh, he's up there and he can see all around it. It's got, oh, uh, this is quite amusing. He, ring, he rings his, rings his girlfriend. I, well, you're jumping a little bit ahead. That's all. That, because oh, none of really? that happens yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're, we're in a village. The opening scene is in a village, and we see this this. Um, this family and all these people and then we cut to these workers getting their wages and this is like the beginning of the outbreak because one of them is very ill and while they're collecting their wages and this one guy's coughing on the radio in english they're talking about a very strange and disturbing violent acts happening here and there around the world Uh, and then this one guy stumbles off into a shack and then at night he's obviously dying because at night his family are mourning um, and then he comes back from the dead. We hear people screaming, and then people start becoming zombies, and more and more zombies attack. And that's then the end of that opening shot. And then we cut to the wind turbine, and Nicholas, our hero Nicholas, millions of miles up in the air on these fucking huge wind turbines. They're huge, aren't they, these things? Yeah, and he must have been doing this, like, for real. <clears throat> Tom Cruise in it. It's Tom Cruise in it. Uh, yeah, he must obviously done this before I don't know. he might be a climber I guess yeah. it's quite a long way up how long did it take to get out he'd be exhausted mm. uh, but I love the fact he makes a phone call to his girlfriend to chat to her but it's that sort of thing if it was me I'd be like guess where I am what guess where I am well, you're at work you're up a wind turbine I know but I want to tell you I'm up a fucking wind turbine talking to you do you know how crazy that is <laughs> I'd have to say it every time 
Well, he gets down from that wind turbine, <laughs> jumps jumps in his Jeep and drives to a local gas station. He knows the gentleman that runs it. This is out in the middle of nowhere, so we're in rural India. Yeah. Um, and he says hello to his buddy. He knows him. And he says, look, we haven't had our delivery of gas, gasoline today. So He does see, though, when he's up the wind turbine, he does see a, 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 a someone sh- sh- slowly walking along attacking another person. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't no understand that though. No, no, because you just said that. Oh, I thought you'd said already. Oh, got down. Do apologise. Yeah, he got. He gets down. He goes, and they set up the fact that he hasn't got much fuel in his truck. Yeah, yeah. But when he was he's up on a turbine, his way, he saw someone. He didn't go back up a turbine afterwards, does he? Yeah, he goes back to another turbine. Oh, <laughs> oh man. So he, he he then calls his girlfriend and says, um, "She's like, oh, I'm pregnant." And he's like, what? Oh, my God, this is amazing. But then she's like, I've got to go. There's like something happening here in the background, some sort of riot. And he's like, what? That's weird. Um, and, then he goes, and then he goes up to the other turbine and he tries to bring in her again. And she gives him a bit more information. But again, there's loads of noise and he can't hear anything. And he's like, for fuck's sake. Uh, and that's when he looks down and in the field, he sees one guy. And then another guy stumble over to him and just attack him and start what looks like he's eating him and he's like what the fuck am i looking at what's good so he climbs back down tries ringing his girlfriend can't get a hold of her and then he's like well i'm panicking i'm panicking i've got to get back to the gas station get more gas for my car and then crack on now we cut to ishani his girlfriend uh, who's pregnant she is in trouble with her dad isn't she she is <clears throat> pregnant by an american foreigner and her dad is not a happy man about this. He's even got someone lined up for her to marry and arrange marriage. He says, you know, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he says, whoever it is would be a much better fit for you. And, you know, his family are very wealthy and successful and it would be good for our family. You need to stop wasting your time on these dreams of these American foreigners. And he doesn't even know that she's obviously pregnant. Oh, he does not know. <clears throat> I am really apologise about my throat. I'm really trying my best not to cough, guys. I do apologise. It's really croaky for some reason. Yeah, croaky blokey. Um, he calls her back so Nick calls her back and this time her father snatches the phone off her and he says you will never see my daughter again it's a classic old school story isn't it and then he he says to her like I said forget this American dream that you've got he doesn't want you he just wants a fling he wants a foreign girl and then he wants to move on you need to marry a local man and and that's kind of it really so there's a little bit of racism here Um, yeah and while he's talking to her, there's a zombie attack outside. They don't know it's a zombie it's attack like, at the time. It's like, you know, uh, uh, oh, saved by the bell. Oh, saved by zombies. Yeah, but Dad, you don't understand. I'm pre- Oh, what's that out there? That's a zombie. Fucking hell. If there's any time a zombie attack happens, that's the perfect time. Um... Uh, he locks the door. He shuts the door because he says, oh, these people are... He doesn't know it's a zombie attack. He just sees violence. So he locks the door for them and their family. Nick radios his friend. And his buddy says, um, there's reports of violence in the streets, Nicholas. What are you up to? Where are you? And he's like, well, I'm doing my wind turbine thing. You know where I am. I'm out all day up, up these huge towers fixing these turbines. But listen, I need you to uh, go and check on my girlfriend. And he's like, oh, forget that. Don't worry about your girlfriend. There's loads of shit going down here. You yeah. need to get back here as soon as you can. It is, it is kind of asking. I don't think he sort of understands the situation. The guy's like, there's fucking loads of shit going on. Basically, there's an aeroplane could get us out. Uh, does he say that now or does he say that later on? He says that a little bit later on. Yeah, yeah. But he does start to explain, like, there's a lot of shit going on. And he's trying to say, go visit my friend. Uh, go visit my girlfriend. See if it... And he's like, no. <laughs> I've got loads of shit to do. I'm not going to go do that. He doesn't so, even know where she lives. <clears throat> he tells his friend, like, she lives on the edge of the slums. Oh, that's helpful. Do you know how big the slums are? How long is this going to take me? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know her name. You haven't told me your name yet. Yeah. Um, so he, he's driving along, panicking, and he runs someone over. So there are a lot of parallels to the first one of this. He runs someone over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, what have I done? He gets out. This person's still alive. I say alive. They're undead. They're under the car. <laughs> reaching for him yeah 
he thinks, oh my god, what, what have we got? So, uh, at least that's another time when zombie. This is great. This is a great movie where human existence is appreciative of a zombie attack. Not often we have this, but what great timings for zombie movies is great. But I'm, oh god, if I'm ever going to run someone over and kill them, that's really bad. Ah, luckily. It was a zombie. Like in Shaun of the Dead, where they run the guy over, and then they're like, are you all right? Yeah. Are you again? Oh, God, it's just a zombie. It's all right. And then they just carry on driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, our, his buddy, the gas station man, is sadly killed, attacked and killed by zombies. He is. A little, little cut scene here. Um, uh, Nick is driving along. He sees more and more of the undead feasting. He kills one of them with a mallet. Pulls a mallet out that he uses on the turbines. Uh, the uh, the effects are the same as the other movie, if not probably a little bit better. Hammer time. It'd be, that would be the best song that they could have been playing in the car. Dun, in the background. Dun, 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 can't touch this. It, turns, it does turn into Sean the Dead, though, I guess. Yeah, it does. Um, he His car's run out of gas now, as we knew it was going to, so he gets off, sets off on foot to go and get a, a tank of petrol from the gas station. Yep. He gets there... It's deserted. There's blood everywhere, all over the walls. He sees his dead friend. Um, a zombie lady attacks him. He hammers her. Hammer uh, time again. Hammer time. Uh, he makes a phone call to Ashani. And he says to her, look, I'll come to you. Stay home. Stay safe. Barricade yourself in. And her father turns around. This time, he slaps Ashani. He says, is that the American? Slap across the face. Yep. That is not good, not good. So we got a lot more um, dynamics working in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a real plot where it's a, a direct line we've got to get to and there's problems along the way. It's very, very, you know, it's good. Now, this is where he calls his buddy on the phone and his buddy says, hey, Nick, look, I can't do what you're asking, but I have got you a seat on the last plane <clears throat> out of here. Yeah, and you People need to get to People are going crazy. It. You've got yeah. to get here. Where's the plane? And it's so far away. He's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there. More and more zombies outside. He says to his friend, fuck it. I'm going to go rescue Ishani. He finds a gun. His buddy comes back from the dead. He has to shoot the guy that he buys petrol off of every other day. He gets surrounded. Um, so he goes up to the roof. Get a really cool overhead shot. Not a drone shot, because this is 2013 or 2012. This probably would have been shot. So they don't think there were drones then. So I'm not sure how they did these cranes. Yeah, you can get uh, they uh, again if they. I think I saw the same sort of camera. It's quite a ha handheld, not proper handheld. It's still a cinema, cinema camera, but more lighter than uh, like a huge camera. Uh, so one person, mm. the camera operator himself, which is the director again, could potentially just have a long sort of crane type uh, tripod extended type job and do it like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Nick does a total Jackie Chan here now, because he's up on the roof. And earlier, his buddy was talking to him about this glider that he's got. And yeah. in one of the Jackie Chan movies, Jackie Chan escapes from um, a bunch of guys who are after him by jumping off a cliff, like a big hill, with this thing on. Now, essentially, guys, what I'm describing to you is a huge um, propeller that you get on the back of one of those gliders on the everglades it's and got a parachute it's got like a circumference of five feet i'd say yeah and he jumps off the roof and you think he's going to take off now and get away from these zombies he crashes and he has to get it's like a kite he has to get enough momentum to take off so he's got to run past all these zombies who are clawing at him it's quite a tense scene yeah. and eventually he gets off the ground and then he starts flying through the air in this glider and it's what's lovely about this is very silent, sort of almost the Walking Dead territory here, where every time he passes a zombie in a field or something, they just sort of reach up for him because they're zombies. They just they just think food, and they sort of reach up to him, don't they? Uh, again, though, <clears throat> they are uh, they they've got their main character just just fucking just like I've got no thing else to go for. I'm just gonna have to try. It. Straps it on his back, not knowing it works goes to run off a building not knowing it works if it doesn't work you you've you've slowed yourself down getting away from them zombies that's for sure and again this is survival horror game yeah 
you know the first uh, the opening first mission you would have to do is get this propeller thing and and, and fly for a little bit yeah i thought i thought game again resident evil again with this movie exactly um the sun starts setting beautiful absolutely beautiful shots here uh, and he crashes into a tree and he's left unconscious hanging from a tree yeah not in the his, best uh, parachute no not the best indeed cut back to the city and we just get a very brief you know riots screaming blood zombie attacks death fire it's, it's all kicking off in the cities not good uh, he's hanging from the tree, bleeding, and there's blood dripping on the floor. I guess it's attracting the zombies, would you say? I don't know. They they seem to be making their way over to him as he hangs from the... I, I don't know. Maybe they can tell... Well, obviously... How, so how does a zombie work, then? So <laughs> it... How does a zombie work, then? Well, I've never really broken it down with you, I don't think. So they... Depends, you know, what type of zombie it is, But well, let's go to slow ones, which we're dealing with here. So they are, excuse me, they are fairly brain dead. They're very, very stupid. Are they just, because they go, obviously, if you can pretend to be a zombie, you can get away with it because they're that stupid. So it's not smell, it's not movement, it's if they think you're acting normal. But if they're just, he's just lying there unconscious, he's not in an act at all. I don't know what is attracting the zombies to him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the, the noise of the creaking in the tree or the blood dripping on the ground. I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe, because it's quite quiet, maybe they can hear that dripping noise. I don't know, I don't know. But a little boy escapes from uh, some commotion and runs into the bush. Yeah. And Nick wakes up to the sound of this little boy shouting. So he cuts himself down from the tree. Uh, He gets one of the guns off one of the zombies. He runs off to save the boy. he's, He's got a mission there, a little boy. Yeah. Uh, Ishani, back to Ishani's dad. He says, "Don't worry, the military are coming." Oh look, there they are! I can see them out the window. The military get out of their van and they just start blasting everybody, whether they're dead or undead. They don't care; just take them out. They're just taking it, everybody out. Essentially, that is what the military do, though. Aren't they get the orders, isn't it? So he's like, "Oh shit! Let's keep the windows and doors shut, Ashani." <laughs> it looks like it might be going uh, sideways out there. Now, Nick speaks to Javed, Javed reveals his name is Javed, this little boy, and they take a little walk and this little boy is a bit like Short Round from Indiana Jones he is determined to be Nicholas's sidekick he's like, oh, listen, you're trying to get to Mumbai, listen, listen my friend, I can take you there, I know this I know the whole of India, like the back of my hand honestly, I can get you anywhere to anywhere really quickly, come on, come on, let's do it He's an orphan, it turns out. Nick's like, oh, look, I don't need you. Just fuck off. He basically wants to leave this kid on his own in the middle of the forest. But the kid like, basically persuades him. And he's like, okay, come with me then. And they do a bit of a walking montage now for a while. Then they find a car. Um, they're attacked. Uh, they kill an old lady and they they get the car keys. Um, they shoot a few zombies in the head. A few nice headshots here. Um Again, all the CGI, not CGI, all the, the effects look fantastic. They speed off in the car, and Nick says, what we need are a bunch of fucking guns. And of course, Javed says, guns? I know where there's loads of guns. I'll guide you to a place full of guns. So this kid literally does know everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so he knows the place. They drive on, and he says, so what are you doing here then? He's like, well, I'm a wind turbine engineer, but I've got a, an Indian girlfriend. And she's pregnant with my baby. And, you know, I, 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 I was pregnant. My wife, I had a girlfriend in the past who was pregnant and she had an abortion. And so they have this really in-depth conversation and he's like pouring his heart out to this little kid. And the little kid says, oh, wow, well, I'm an orphan. You know, I was found on the streets, of the orf- on the steps of the orphanage with this little teddy bear. So they have this little um, chat. They pass loads of zombies. They see other survivors on the road driving as well. So there's a few more people here than there was in the African zombie outbreak. Um, and then Javid falls asleep as they're driving along. What should he have done, Gav? What should Nicholas have done while Javid was asleep? Pulled out his little horn. <laughs> well, that's not my not his penis. That isn't a euphemism, no. Um, they reach the military blockade. I love this scene. Love this scene. And we've seen this before, where people are in a queue of cars, and so there's military up ahead, and at the last minute they decide, nah, I'm not going to do this, and they speed off in the other direction. Yeah. But um, they watch these guys, these military, Indian military, get on a bus, 
was just full of normal Indian civilians. And there's one woman on there, or, or a man, who's got like a a bite. Get off the bus! They just execute this person in front of everybody else. And then they just start pulling off anyone with an injury and just blowing their brains out in front of the rest of the b- people on the bus. Yeah. So, you know, like you said, they've got their orders. If there's anyone with an injury, headshot. Yeah. Got to be, the Indians don't fuck about. Yeah, we can't uh, risk, it, risk it, you know. <clears throat> Nick think, thinks, fuck this. I'm not staying here. So he speeds off in the car. They shoot at them, but they do get away. But then the car ends up going off a cliff. It's trying to get past the bus, doesn't it? And it can't. It's a it's really not- tight road, and the bus is like, I don't give a shit, I'm going, and just pushes his car off, which is, I guess, because of the panic of a zombie, the bus driver's like, I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> so the I'm, car gets I'm, no way and gets pushed off the cliff, but they get out. I wish the buses in Bristol were better like, like they are there, because they don't give a fuck here. They don't care how long they take getting anywhere. But over there, they'll, pop, they'll knock you off the road to get to where they've got to be. Yep. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so they've now got no car, so they come across an old sort of ruined temple and a tomb that's just full of monkeys, basically. Um, and they decide that they're going to have a little, have a look around in there in this compound. There's bodies everywhere, and this is where Nicholas finds his motorcycle. Uh, but they need the keys, so they have a look around. They go up some steps, and again, it's all so survival horror. You've got to go in. You find your motorcycle. But you need the keys. So you go into this building, up these dark steps, around these dark corridors. Now and again, there's a zombie. You take them out. You eventually find the keys. Um, He gets a crowbar now to add to his weaponry. Um, Takes a few zombies out with that. And they ride off on the motorbike. Great shots again of the kid on the back of the bike and sometimes on the front of the bike while they're riding along. It's all beautifully shot. (coughs) Night, Night falls. Um, they find a van and they approach the van and it's full of undead um, so they think fuck this we'll leave that van alone yeah that's it's like the first one when he sort of just walks past a zombie effect it's kind of like don't need to waste bullets just keep going um, and we cut back to Ishani and her dad and he's sort of saying to her look this is something we've we've heard about I and mean, it's been taught, you know, in, in all religions and teachings. It's the end of the world, whether it's evil or not. It's some kind of judgment day. And the things that are going on out there are clearly some kind of evil like in its purest form. Um, we need to get through this as a family. We'll stick together and we'll get through this. Um, but it's judgment day for mankind, essentially, he's telling her. So he's obviously a deeply religious man. Um Earlier on, it's such a contrast when they did go back to the place where he thought the guns were and stuff, that kid. He goes back there and it's just birds singing and stuff. It was so nice just to have that peacefulness of the birds singing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and the monkeys just sort it, of sat it's, there. There's a moment in the film which like, the first one didn't have, and it's. Uh, I wonder if when they wrote the script, it's like, you know, we have a moment here a bit more peaceful, the birds are singing. They probably did. And, well, no, they wouldn't. They're not getting fucking back to birds in, are they? Just, well, act to monkeys. Just, they shot us. And, but it just comes out with real a uh, moment of chill out, a bit more of like normality. Like birds are singing. Do you know what these I mean? Are, these are clever guys that use whatever falls in front of them. These four brothers. But you I, know, think, they... I don't think obviously, obviously, that it's just a happenstance that the birds are singing doing like that. Do you know what I mean? But I think it, it's yeah. In the editing, they can look at it and go boom, and it works perfectly as a peaceful away from zombies safety. Do you know when the police turn up, and I'm always happy. And then it, and that continues into this scene now because they then stop in a forest and they pick some fruit from the trees and Javed says this was always my favourite fruit you should taste it and Nick tastes it he's like yeah that's actually really good uh, and then they talk up they learn more about each other's stories and they talk more and then some bastard steals their motorcycle he doesn't go off very fast you could definitely run after him do you reckon yeah just grabbed him off the back. If that's Grab- the only form of transport zombies, I'm behind you and I've pulled you off that back of that and I've, I've given you a kick in. <laughs> pulling me off. You know, I'm pulling you off. Jesus. Um, a really lovely moment here when they're walking on foot is there's all these fresh graves yeah. and as they walk past one of them, one of them just starts slowly moving. So... I guess that you know. I'd love to have seen some undead coming back up out of the ground because ah, you don't see that up. very often. Yeah, it's the you old school zombies. It. It? That's should we make a zombie movie? Make it old school. Yeah, bury me in the ground and I will pop out the ground really slowly. Do you know? 
in the past 10 years of making films or whatever, how many times I've had people say to me, if you make a zombie movie, you'll be a zombie. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's like a lot. Every time I tell anybody that Deadpool is making another film, I'll be a zombie. <clears throat> I'm like, who says we're making a zombie film? He's never, we've never made a zombie. Uh, no, we've never made a zombie. We've written a zombie script. Yeah, we never actually made one of those. We yeah. never made it. You never know. So they get some sleep um, and uh, in, in this weird building. And this is a really creepy scene now where Javed is asleep and Nick's trying to get to sleep. And he's in and out of these horrible nightmares. And there's a zombie peeking through this slat of wood, isn't there? And its eyes are just pure white eyes, obviously. And it's just staring at Nick, obviously like food. And every time he looks around, he's he's trying to get to sleep. But every time he looks around, there's just these zombie eyes looking through this plank of wood at him. It's a really creepy, effective scene. Yeah. And obviously, he's trying to get some sleep. It doesn't get much, I expect. Um, in the morning, they run from the building. They're chased, but they do manage to escape. Um, and he says to Javed, what's this teddy bear about? This is my issue with the film. This begins my issue with the film. Didn't need this plot point. But anyway, Javed says, "Some this teddy bear was in my basket when they found me on the orphanage steps. And that's how I know I'm not an orphan. I do know my parents are alive because I was told that this teddy bear isn't a manufactured one. It was made by somebody, made by somebody who couldn't make things very well. And I oh, know yeah. this, this was my mother yeah. put this in my basket and I know she's out there somewhere. It, uh, because there is, there is a resolve to this later oh, on. And, the, and then that it. resolve is completely taken away two minutes later. Yep. Oh, I, I, gotcha. really, yeah. I despise that, it's this one aspect it, of it. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty sh- sure it should have been taken out in the second draft. Um, they get attacked on uh, a railway track because Javed says there's two ways we can go. We can follow the railway track. It'll be really quick or we can go the really long way where it's going to be safe. And obviously they want to take that, the shortcut. That classic chestnut. Yeah. So they do a stand by me and they follow the railway tracks, but he drops his comb. Uh, oh no, sorry. That is stand by me. Um, no, he, uh, they get attacked and a helicopter out of nowhere. There's a fucking helicopter full of survivors. And Nick says, get to the chopper. To the kids. And the kid to the gets kid. to the chopper. And he says, to Ch- Javed gets put on board and he's trying to get there, but it takes off. Yeah. And he says, um, I'll find you. I'll find you. And yeah, that's quite a cool moment. Yeah. Again, Joseph Milson great acting in this um cut back to ashani and her father and their mother is dying and uh she's been bitten it turns out and she's talking to her mum mum i know you're not, not going to be with us much longer and her mum says a mother always knows her daughter and i know i know that you're pregnant and she she touches her tummy and she says I've seen what you're like in the mornings, obviously with morning sickness and whoever it is, you know, just go to him and try and have a family and, you know, and it's a really touching, again, a lovely moment in all this chaos that the first movie didn't give us. But the dad is outside the door and he overhears all of this. So he now knows his daughter is pregnant to this American. Um, Kind of wants them to have some new life with zombies all around, don't you? So like... Stop being a dick still. It's really big of things to hand here. And the last thing her mum says as she dies is, follow your heart. Yeah. Um, cut back to Nick. He's following the railway tracks, as Javid said. You know, just follow these. You'll find it. He finds a crashed car. Oh, Gav. This, yeah, so... Um, this is the scene. If of, you, the best scene of all the... Yeah, the so moves. if you haven't seen this movie, obviously we're spoiling it. And this scene's... Um, pretty powerful this is up there with uh it is up there with the end of the mess you know. and and just just for the power actually it's up there with, i can't give you an example up the there with big big movies everything. where it's just a certain thing happens in a movie and like fucking hell like maybe like um full metal jacket when the dude commits suicide you know things like that it's just a point in a movie like whoa shit it's an incredibly powerful scene in a low budget very, sequel zombie very well movie. acted yeah um, very and, well acted um, by everybody involved not just the main guy but the people but in the this, car as well and this is what we were talking about earlier while <clears> they were trying to shoot this which is a very full on scene 
um, a gang basically turned up and said, like, give us money or we're going to stone you to death. And they had really pushed it. And they were, like, saying to the directors, like, you fucking, like, they will not, you won't get out of here. They're going to stone you to death. You need to get the money and stuff like that. So the, they threatened to rape the men. Yeah. They said, we'll, we'll find, find you. you and we'll rape you all. Yeah. Um, they they threw a dog at one of the directors. A, do- a drop, live drop dog. Kicked a, a dog. A dog. At, at a director. And that's at a different point where he's just walking through town. But but you got to remember this scene that we're about to talk about. Um, the, the main actor has got all of these feelings. Like, it must be exhausted as well. And all the shit going on. Like, we might get killed in it. And he's got to go and shoot the film. <laughs> shoot this scene, so to speak. Excuse the pun. Dan, ex- go on. Give us the scene. So he comes across this car, which is crashed. And there's a... Uh, a family in the car. The dad is clearly dead. He's at the wheel of the car. It looks like he's dead. Um, the mother and her daughter, probably about eight, nine, ten years old, they're stuck in the car. They can't get out. The seat, the way the car is bent up, they cannot get out. And Nick, zombies are approaching. Yeah, Nick tries, you know, he sees them and he thinks, fucking hell, okay, I'll try and help them, you know. Yeah, they're saying, please get us out of here, please. He, yeah. He's trying his best. He thinks, by the time I've even got close to getting them out of here, the zombies will be on both me and them. Oh, yeah, everyone's dead. Yeah. So, and, and and you've got to remember, he, he might be a little bit more inclined to carry on what he's doing, but he knows if he does die, he can't save his girlfriend who's pregnant with his child. So he says to the mum, I think I can get you out. Yeah, I can the get you seat, out. I could, yeah. The seat catch is jammed. I think I'm going to shoot the seat catch. It's going to be a really loud noise. So I want you to both cover your ears and look down. And I'm going to shoot the seat catch and try and get you out. So they do that. They look down. He shoots the mum in the head. No, he, then he shoots. Oh, is it the, he is it shoots the daughter the door, first? He shoots the little girl first. And the As mum, he shoots, so the mum looks right. The look on her face is incredible. It is, it is like a mother's in that situation yeah. and the look I can see her eyes now in my head yeah like. the, the look she gives if that was a photograph you would think it was, it was actually happening and it's it's the thing like I thought you could have, it's all of a sudden it's so many emotions and feelings in one shot it's like I thought you were going to help us. You've shot my child. What the fuck? Oh, you're going to shoot me. And then me. he shoots her as well. It's like, oh my And then God. he screams. He screams, fuck you. To and the he's zombies. screaming, screaming, and screaming. And, and you've got to remember, just off camera, there's a gang. Watch them. Gonna a stone gang them of like 12 them. guys yeah. who are going to stone them. It's just like, what the shit? You know, like, and, and it's just, uh, and knowing, knowing off, that comes off so well. I mean, that's how he pulled off some of the emotion and how they pulled off some of the emotion, I guess, but... I mean, I was pulling it off. But also, but also, this scene, honestly, is up there with one of the most emotionally charged scenes of all time, I'm saying that. Yeah, you know. this, the, it, it ups this film more uh, from the first one. Like, and, is... and like I said, Alice watched this with me and she was absolutely soul destroyed but she was like i can't believe it why did he do it and i was like i paused it and i was like because yeah, you know if he didn't do baby. it yeah. they would have all died da, 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 da. and i said and to he's her, got his baby he's got his mission i said have you not seen the mist and she said no and i said Don't, did you spoil it i told her the end she wouldn't ever watch it i told her the end of that and she's like oh my god i was like yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah see what's like when the first I, time I said, you watch if it if you ever google i said to her if you ever google the most downbeat ending of all time usually that the mist is usually number one. People will talk about horror, horror movies or not. I, the mean, mist, I, I, I showed that to Charlie uh, when we watched The Mist, and they were just like, uh, like "What? What do you mean?" Uh, I haven't watched it since I've become a dad. I think, it, I, yeah, um, I think it's because I'm a parent. Sit with me now, but I wasn't a parent when I watched it for the first time. I think I don't know. I can't remember. <clears throat> Maybe, but but yeah, this scene is absolutely incredible, guys, and the best scene out of both of these movies. Um, it comes out of nowhere. It's real, visceral it's, emotion. It's gnarly, and he's notably, noticeably upset. Yeah, and then the thing is, though, in a normal film, he, he might commit suicide himself, um, shoot himself from something like that. But he's got a mission. He's got his baby. Is it Shani and his baby? So he's hot. He's thirsty. And he's tired, and he's stumbling along. How many walking. zombies were coming out of though? Can he just shot the zombies? It's quite a few of them. Oh, okay. Good, good sort of dozen of them, perhaps. Mm, okay. Um, I suppose shooting those is going to attract more, the, isn't it? Yeah, and also like 
Exactly. They're all going to get eaten. At the very least, the, the people in the car would have had a horrible death and then become zombies themselves. So he's like, well, I'll just save them. Get into you, really. Um, so he's stumbling along. He starts hallucinating um, about this chair in a room, which is a bit weird because that's the chair he ends up in in the room. And then he kind of snaps out of it all, fights a few more zombies, finds a zombie sat there, and realises, that's the bastard that stole my bike. It's the biker, bicycle thief. You bastard. So he, he goes to take the keys out of the pocket. Obviously, the guy's still alive. Well, undead. But he realises what's happened, doesn't he? Well, his kids have eaten him. This yeah. Du- dude, this dude's got nicked his bike to get back to his family, and his kids have just fucking eaten him. Yeah, he's gone back to his family. I've got a motorbike. This is fantastic. Oh, you're all zombies. Yeah. Because I think his guts are hanging out or something, aren't they? yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he grabs his motorbike. I suppose as parents, you provide the food. Yep. Yeah. I put the food on this table. My own intestines. Dark. You're the one that was talking about laser beaming babies with your eyeballs earlier. I was thinking, you know, I should have said it as in like an old lady walking a dog, pushing a baby in a pram, and I was just fucking lasing them out. You are getting us cancelled. <laughs> this is the last podcast episode ever because we're getting cancelled. <laughs> the last podcast. <laughs> um, he gets on the motorbike we get a montage of him riding along and he gets to the slums really great shot here of him riding his motorcycle through the really narrow slums don't know how they did this without permits probably some of these people were thinking who the fuck's this British guy on a motorcycle riding at me um, it might have they, concerned you they did this in a Will Smith movie called Gemini Man I don't know if you've seen that where yeah. he's riding a motorcycle through really narrow streets being pursued so they kind of have done this recently so I don't know if they would have seen probably not seen this but uh, it's really cool and he gets to Shani's house um, her dad has been bitten at this point because he's opened the doors a little bit and someone bit him through the door she lets him in the cheesy emotional music kicks in but we're going with it at this point bit of saxophone it's not saxophone it's not a saxophone I thought you'd be pleased, Gary. Blue oyster. Blue oyster. Um, her dad realizes, okay, wow, this guy is genuine. He's fought his way here. So he shakes his hand. Last moment. Yeah, there's a zombie attack outside. You just shake your brilliant. Hand. Thank you. You're great. You joined the family. Excellent. Help us. Like, no, he's, he's fuck dying the there, zombies. Isn't he? Fuck him. Mm. So they leave in slow motion. Um, they arrive. <laughs> they, don't, they leave in normal speeds, but it's been edited to it's in slow motion. They don't go. Ooh. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. You'll be a good dad. I'm sorry I've been bitten. Fuck um, you, zombies. The zombies would be really, really slow. Really slow. You could just walk around them. Yeah. <laughs> Run round them. You got, what's your exercise? How many steps you done today? It's, it's not steps Gav, anymore. It's ten times round a zombie. If we were in a zombie epidemic and it was like Romero zombies like this, I'd be tripping them over. I'd be like having little gags Man, on them. You know what I mean? Me and you. Let's just play loads terrible. of fucking tricks on them. It's I'd like they do, uh, Sean and Dead. They claim do Sean Dead the first zombies in the garden. Like, Oi! They're throwing stones at them and stuff like yeah. that. It's kind of that, but I would definitely be like, if not zombies, let's do some trip wires. So just I'd trip, like get behind one. I'd get behind one of my hands and knees yeah. and you'd push him over me, you know? <laughs> It'd be so bad, but we'd have so much fun with zombies. Oh, we're nasty, aren't we? Not really, they're the living <laughs> dead. Like, maybe they have some entertainment out of them. Yeah, I'd definitely be doing pranks on do them. Do you know, no, I'll tell you what I'd do with zombies. I would do, like, the wind turbines. I would do them like hamsters in a wheel, and I'd get them to provide energy. I'd do them like hamsters in a wheel, he says. Like Richard's gear. Um, um, oh. uh, I'd have a load of zombies just going around in a circle, just providing energy. I know it's slow, but you'd work out the technology. Elon Musk could come along, make out technology using zombies to energise the world. I think it's good. I think bring on zombies. I think, it's good. I think bring on zombies. We are ready for it to help us get away from all this uh, nuclear fusion. Gav speech, everyone. Jamie, I hope you're proud of what you've you've done here. Yep. Thank oh, you know. we should carry on. So uh, they get to Mumbai and they find this huge um, building and sort of part of the city really uh, cordoned off. That's got 
loads and loads and loads of survivors in it. Um, he gets and he says to to Ashani, I've got us some seats on a plane, but there's something I need to do. I've got a promise to keep. So he walks in and he's shouting, Javed, Javed, Javed. And eventually Javed is there. He gets up, he drops his teddy. He runs over to Nick. And it's says, lucky he finds him. And it's quite a nice poignant moment as well. This is it? great. All this, this is great. He says, this is Ashani. And he says, wow, I can see why you fought your way to find her. You know? Hey, baby. <laughs> Are you hitting on my girlfriend, you little shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but then the bit happens I hate, which is he's dropped the teddy bear and some random woman in the crowd looks at the teddy bear and thinks, that was a teddy bear I made 12 years ago for my kid that I didn't want. Oh, him, and that I think, must be my child. What a fucking coincidence. I don't need to have that in this film. Oh, it's just ridiculous. This I is, hate it. I this, hate funny it. enough, is like a Hollywood exec going, this is, do you know what you need? You need a teddy bear, kid. Because get, what Get a happened, teddy bear in this movie. But, but it doesn't matter, though, because what happens in a minute, they're all fucking dead. Well, then, it, but thankfully, the next scene is incredible, which is all these fighter jets fly over. And um, they've been told what to do. And Javid says, "Ah, oh, the Americans are here, the, the, the rescue jets. And he says, no. those don't look like rescue jets to me. No. And then they realise, oh, shit, they're going to bomb everybody. And the building starts getting bombed while they're inside it. Again, great effects with the jets and the way the, the building's shaking, falling apart. So everyone starts running to take cover. Uh, so Nick, Ashani and Javed uh, head downstairs um, to like an underground room. And it's got a chair in it, which is like the chair he was having these weird visions of in his hallucination. They sit in the chair, him and his now adopted son, Javed, and his pregnant girlfriend. Yeah. And that's the end. That's the end. I've written the end. Pretty bleak. Yeah, pretty bleak. Pretty fucking bleak. He didn't have a good day, did he? He shot a mum and her daughter in a car. No, um, it's a really good movie. Gave a little kid a lift um, on a motorbike for a bit, and then... Uh, it does achieve getting to his girlfriend. It does achieve his goal. Um, whether or not they survive is another But question. you don't know. But yeah, it's it's a it's a lot better and tighter film, and like it, it kind of flows a bit better. And like I say, geography is just it's different. Uh, it just works a lot better. How long is it? It's... Uh, the other one was like it's hour only- 45. Yeah, this is an hour thirty-eight, so it's not much shorter, but it feels a lot shorter because it's quite punchier, yeah, it's and we awesome. have the, we have moments to catch our breath. It doesn't feel samey. Um, great characters, I love Javed as well. But tighter Nicholas, and more organised. Yeah, great movie, and that scene, guys. Mm, that scene's you know, very like whoa. If you've not seen either of these, you can skip the first one, even like Gav I said think, earlier, maybe. and you could just watch this movie and prepare for yeah. that scene. It is a gut punch. Yeah, um, it's a it's a it's a better film. The second one. He look. I'm looking now as we're talking. I've got so him, Frank Grillo, yeah, isn't he? And the trailer, and he just looks like an action hero. Yeah. You know, he's not he's not muscly, but he's he's no. Lean. He does the uh, uh, the the. It's the guy next door. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Badass. Yeah. Um, I'm, and I love this movie, and, and because of that, this gets a higher rating for me, and it's the more recommended out of the two. Yeah, I agree. And thanks, Jamie, because I wouldn't have seen this because I didn't know this existed. There we go. And yeah, it's, and hopefully I, some other listeners will now listen to it and check it out as well, which presumably you guys will. And as Jamie wanted, you know, we've talked in great detail about all the problems that went on behind it, and, and just. You know, I think our big takeaway from both of these is you cannot say these guys didn't pour their hearts and souls into making these two films. They literally just got their testicles out and slapped on a table and said, we're making a movie. Hammer these as hard as you can with baseball bats. And it, it doesn't matter because we're making a movie. We're going to carry on making the film. With hammered testicles. Anyway. <laughs> is that a name of a band? Hammered testicles. <sighs> And who are you going to see tonight? I've yeah. got tickets for Hammered Testicles. It's the Vincent Price tribute band. Why? Vincent Price? So it's, it's got to be punk, though. Yeah. All right. Hammered Testicles. Um, Jamie, we love you lots. Uh, but I'm afraid it's time to remove the crown. It is time. Place it back Put into it back the vault. Back in the, uh, the cupboard. In the vault. But, I hope you do provide us with some werewolf movies the next round, next time it's your go. But you don't have to. There's no pressure. You are the werewolf lady, of course. Not but, literally. But what ones? But 
What ones? You yeah. don't know, though, if she isn't a werewolf lady, because she likes werewolf movies a lot. She There's fucking a chance loves werewolf. that she is actually a werewolf, but we don't know, what because if, why would we know? It's not like she podcasts it? when she's changed and turned. What if her and Brian, and her husband, are actually werewolves? Like a howling podcast. thing going on. Yeah, and they just podcast I don't, I don't to cover mean, like, the sexy scenes. <laughs> and it's all a cover-up. That's weird, that movie, isn't it? The, old, the, the, end, the end of the mm, Which bit? Werewolf sex. I no, I think the weirdest bit is that little gremlin she turns into at the end and goes, Me! Yeah, it's a camera. Kind of funny one. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe Jamie and Brian are werewolves. I don't know. If you are, please don't tell us. I want it to remain a mystery. It, well, it's better. It's more of a conversation piece for Dan and I. Yeah, we like to believe that you are. Werewolf, so. their wolf. Werewolf. And their castle. <laughs> That was anyway. The Dead 1 and The Dead 2 India. Bit of a crap title, but a fucking amazing film in some ways. Um, and both great films in a lot of ways. So thank you, Jamie. It's time for us to say goodbye. So we're going to have a little break. Come back to the outro. And we're back. We're back to say goodbye. And again, thank Jamie for those two picks. Thank it's you. great. These patron picks, you know, always come up with stuff that we wouldn't normally discuss. Um, and these are movies that, that I don't really hear people talk about them. You know, we all know the stories about them as horror fans. We know the stuff that went on behind the scenes. But yeah, so great to talk about that. But Gav, I know what you're asking. What is coming up next? What's coming up next, Dandy? <laughs> well, Gavatron, um, our next episode, episode 154, is my birthday episode. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. I'm going to party like it's my birthday, but I ain't going to wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, that's for sure. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. <laughs> Uh, so, as as people will know if they've heard us past episodes, but if you don't, I've selected two Dolph Lundgren movies for my birthday, because it's my birthday and I can do what I want. Um, one of them is Dark Angel from 1990, where he plays a cop fighting an alien who's trying to extract adrenaline from humans' brains because it's a drug on that alien's own planet. Um, Sarah, you know that we're watching these this weekend. In the US, it's called... I come in peace, I believe, but uh, over here it's called Dark Angel. And I'm pairing that up, of course I'm pairing it up with Masters of the Universe, because I love He-Man, and to talk about He-Man is just a joy for me. So I'll be we'll be talking about the Masters of the Universe movie from 1987 with Courtney Cox and the headmaster from Back to the Future and a few other people in it as well. He's Dolph, the cop, isn't he? He is. Dolph Lundgren in a loincloth. It's just great stuff all around. Sylvester um, Sloan turned up on set saying, you gave this guy lines? Yeah, poor Dolph. But hey, it's Dolph. After that, episode 155, the one after that, we will be doing a director special. It's our 10th year of podcasting. So whenever we can, we're doing a director special this year. And it's Andre Overdraw. Uh, we're going to be covering his two movies, Troll Hunter from 2010, mm. which is kind of a found footagey type um, fun creature feature mm. uh, really different European take on that and I love all the troll stuff with it and all the sort of the rules behind them and that that'll be fun to talk about and we're pairing that up with his other movie The Autopsy of Jane Doe which is just terrifying um, seen it about three times and it still gets under my skin every time it's a good real good first time I watched it was when <laughs> when I was living above the funeral parlour so yeah. I had a I had dead bodies just below me, literally six feet and below me as dead bodies. And um, I watched it at night time in the dark, and it was just terrifying. And there's Honestly, only two, two cast members in it, really, apart from unless you count the, the body. Just watched it again. Oh, my God. Why am I watching this one of all movies? Yeah. It's good. Um, uh, after that will be another patron, big, 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 for episode 156. We have not received the picks yet. But they are on the way, so don't you worry. So because of that, I'm actually going to do something weird, and I'm going to let you know what the one after that is. So I'm letting you know the fourth one after that, um, because that should be around about summertime coming in. So as always, to mark the start of summer, 
we're going to be covering another two Jason movies. Um, nice. We'll be covering Friday the 13th Part 4, nice. the final chapter, <laughs> followed by Part 5, <laughs> which is not a new beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason movies, we love you. I love that, though, because it will be summer. It'll be our, like, window open. You'll be able to hear the crickets outside as you yeah. watch, watch Jason stomp around the woods. I love yeah. I love the films. Nostalgia a, haven. Yeah, and that's and that's why I love kicking off summer with us reviewing those sort of movies. So yeah, we'll be doing those. We've we've reviewed one, two, and three in the past. Did, so uh, what happened to Easter? Did, we had no Easter stuff, did we? But we should we have done something. I no, feel. we we didn't bother because we've we've kind of exhausted all the egg related films uh, with critters and aliens. Although there is a new alien movie coming out, which actually looks really decent. Um, yeah, well, maybe next year we'd do that and try and do another Easter episode if we get egg. chance. There is a new movie out called Easter Bloody Easter horror movie. Well, maybe. Let's let's check the trailers before but we it, say it, these things, please. Well, it looks like the sort of ginger dead man movie. Uh, so and there's just a, don't think we'll be covering it's just that a waste one. of time, isn't it? <clears throat> but yeah, we're not doing the Easter ones anymore. I don't think for I now. I don't get any. deep with films like this. Do you know what I mean? Um, and we've also kind of stopped the Valentine's Day stuff because I think we've watched pretty much every or reviewed every horror slash no, we romance haven't, movie. Because I said to you, Valentine's, that we need to do that New Zealand film. Where the woman kidnaps the guy and you haven't seen it. I said we should have done that. I was also thinking Gone Girl would be a good one. Uh, uh, okay, and there's Natural Born Killers as well. So there's a, there's uh, a few we could potentially do still. Uh, we'll we're, talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. But yeah, so that's what's the next four episodes are looking like. Uh, we got some Dolph Lundgren action. Then we've got. Um, dead bodies and troll hunters then we've got a mystery couple of movies coming from our patron followed by jason marking the start of the summer so stay tuned for the next few episodes my friends and listeners pretty good shit coming yeah pretty fucking good shit this was some good shit i had a lot of fun on this episode do you um, know what i saw earlier speak fake your fucking landon i'm um, going back to lockstock i was watching uh it's sunny in philadelphia earlier it was the second episode when they're in Ireland. Oh, yeah. And they're sitting at the bar chatting away. And I just saw a guy sitting at the bar, and I saw the back of him, and the side, kind of back of his side and his hair, and a little bit back of his hair. Without actually seeing his face, I went, that's Nick the Greek. And was it him? Yeah. Brilliant. It, and he turns at one point, it does. It, they start singing, they bash the tables when um, uh, Charlie finds his dad. And mm-hmm. they bash the table singing, and he kind of looks around at one point a little bit, but that's it, and then just looks back. And I look, when I'm on IMDb, it is. And it, uh, if it's just like, you guys don't know that you've got Nick the Greek there, it'd be well funny. He should have been in it. It's just like, should oh, have what said, a shame. Said a few lines. Yeah. It's really funny, though. Like, I noticed him from just his figure and his hair. They really, should have done a, really a line. weird. Yeah. Well, it's time for some housekeeping, Gav, and then uh, we will say our goodbyes. Housekeeping. So we are the podcast on Haunted Hill. Thank we, you, everybody. We for could listening. have a hotel, not in the normal base sort of way, but we could wear little little maid outfits, couldn't we? Is scare this just people. For me and you, no. We, <laughs> no, scare people when the mornings we go clean their rooms. And they're hung over. Housekeeping. Uh, Dan walks in with his beard. You're a sexy beard, mate. What? My balls no, hanging I'm at the bottom a of my yeah. You know, like in um, Scary Movie, Miss Man with the balls yeah. hanging at the bottom of the... Oh, uh, that is Miss, all, Miss Man, it's just... Uh, the whole thing of that is just not right. I don't like the balls hanging out. I don't like that character. We should cover a Scary Movie at some point. Yeah, we probably should. We could Steve probably Bridges. do the Scary Movie franchise. I don't know. The last couple were uh, fucking atrocious, weren't they? Let's be honest. All right, let's just do maybe one and two. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, we're the podcast on Honor Thank you again to everybody for listening, supporting... Uh... Horror spoof episode. Yes. There's a few. Well, we, i tell you what we could pair it up with, Saturday Gav. Saturday 14th as well. Gav's, Gav's desperate to cover Police Academy. Yeah. <laughs> you brought it up the other day and I was just like, we so should we do could, Police Academy. We could do Police Academy and Scary Movie. Just for the fuck of it. Because, yeah. why not? I'll add it to the list. Got it. There you go, guys. I this is how we plan our episodes. I was quite into the Maniac Cop and Police Academy, though. Oh, yeah, of course. I said Maniac Cop. That, that, we'll, that we'll works. Stick to that. Then, yeah. we, then you could find a world of strange, like crazy cops, which I'm sure there's a couple. You're already writing the episode for me. This is fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. All right. I'll steal all your ideas. Um, 
yes so thank you to everybody for listening uh, you can message us uh, our web our email address is the podcast on haunted who outlook.com we are and have been for 10 years a proud member of legion podcast network indeed um go to their website legionpodcast.com to find out more about all the other shows on the network all the back show back catalogs and all of our um back catalogs you know all the past episodes etc um and we are a proud member of deadbolt media yeah um, so again, if you want to go to debot.com, debotfilms.com, sorry, I'm getting my words muddled up. The, the Deb- web, the website's still there. Yeah, um, we're also on Facebook. Just go to the podcast on Haunted Hill. Join our community. Join us, Join and us. it's a community that has been going for ten years. It's a lot of lovely people on there. It's fun. Uh, Legion have a podcast page as well. Again, it's just Legion Podcasts on Facebook. Wherever you're listening to us now is where you can continue to listen to us, unless that website or whatever it is gets shut down. But we are on Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple Podcast Addicts, and all the other bits and bobs. Just Google us; you'll find us. Uh, we're also on Instagram. It's the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta, uh, which is where I promote the episodes when they drop. I mentioned Deadbolt Films, deadboltfilms.com again, and uh, we have a YouTube channel, don't we, Gav? Yeah. Uh, um, Deadbolt Films. We've got um, uh, May the 4th, which is obviously Star Wars Day. Uh, we've got the premiere of the black and white version of Star Wars Century Moon. It's um, We just we tried it out and it looked really fantastic so uh you know we kind of bleed in that movie for what we what we can <laughs> but we're do- releasing that on may the 4th on our youtube channel um uh yeah i was gonna say something else um yeah the website's up and stuff also um with sanctuary moon very quickly we wouldn't we were asked to um play at a festival in ireland um uh, sort of around cork so um I think it was. It, or it was around. It was basically where they filmed some of Luke Skywalker's bits in those newer Star Wars films. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the festival's playing, which is quite cool, really. They've asked Sanctuary Moon to play there, but um, they've just done an award ceremony. Well, they will be doing an award ceremony. Uh, I can't attend, um, but we've been nominated. What is it for? Best International Picture. Best International Picture. Best Actor for Mark. Yeah. Um, and best score for you. Yeah, which is fantastic. So you never know. We might three noms. We might Brilliant. get an award yeah. for the film, which would be fantastic. Pretty, pretty yeah. awesome. Um, and on the side, uh, that that Joseph's missing a series that we had once upon a time. You might have known about. We kind of made in lockdown. Uh, I've taken a couple of scenes from that. I think I've said this before. I don't remember. But I'm making that into a feature film, so I'm still working on that. And it's actually not bad, if I do say so myself. So it's just kind of doing a found footage thing on the side while we're prepping our proper movie. So that's deadbotfilms.com. YouTube is Deadbot Films. Find our um, page there and you'll find all our videos. Um, you can find out more about our short films, our feature films, our podcasts, because Gav, you also do a podcast called... The High Strangeness Podcast with my lovely dearest Sarah. And we talk about weird things. We did a cave-in episode recently, um, which was quite terrifying for people because it's just such a like horribly claustrophobic thing. Um, but we do fun episodes and we do f- episodes on serial killers. Every third episode is pretty much a serial killer. I think it's how we rock it. Um, yeah. Lots yeah. of true crime. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, so if you like that stuff, come listen to me talk about that stuff where we delve into the mind of killers and why they do stuff. Talking of other podcasts, I am guesting on a couple of shows which you can check out over the next Who month shows, or so. shows, Dandy? Um, I will be on Ricky Morgan's Doctor Movie. Uh, discussing Short Circuit. Number five is alive. Um, fantastic movie with Johnny Five. Um, some slight racism in it, which we'll talk oh, about, I expect. Uh, and I'm also appearing... Slight? Slight? Yeah, slight. Uh, let's just say brown Fed face, on. shall we? Full on racism. Um, and uh, Steve Guttenberg, though. What, what can you say? You love, it's full on racism, and Steve Guttenberg. <laughs> uh, and I'm also appearing on the... Uh, Eternal Darkness of the Not So Spotless Mind, which is Kate and Matt's show. Yep. I was on there uh, a while back, and I'm on there again this time. Um, I hope I'm allowed to say what I'm covering. I think, think I am, so I'm just going to say it anyway. I've selected two Kiwi zombie, uh, sorry, two Kiwi comedy horrors in the form of Brain Dead, obviously, which is Jackson's Brain Dead, and What We Do in the Shadows. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So cool. I'll be discussing with that with them, and that will probably be out in the next month or so so yeah look out for my voice if you like it on a couple of other shows as well um 
So thank you to everybody, but mainly thank you, especially to our patrons. Um, if you, you want to become a patron and support the show um, from as little as a pound or a dollar a month, then you can do so by going to Patreon and searching for the podcast on Haunted Hill. Uh, or you can message me again on the email address, the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com. Or you can message me on Facebook Messenger and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, if you become a patron, you get a T-shirt in one of three colors of, in the size of your choice. Um, you also, and we will post that to you for absolutely free. You also get access to our entire back catalogue. Every Friday, I'm releasing one of our historic episodes, what we call Freaky Friday. Um, and there's other sometimes bonus content videos and other episodes, occasionally shorter episodes on there that, that go up from time to time. And you will also get to pick uh, two films for us to review. So yep. we try and do every three episodes is a patron pick. Yep. And I'm trying to retain the order that we did it in the first round. So we're on the second round of our patrons now. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, we'd appreciate it. It helps keep the show running and it's fun for you guys. And it's a great way for us to interact with you and for you to tell us what to, mm-hmm. what to talk about about like one and two yeah it's fun just doing the patron picks and i've already got a load of patrons telling me what they want for their second and even their third rounds well i'm sure Um, they're sort of at times watching movies go oh it's like what we do Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. i'll watch a movie and just message you say we've got to cover that it'd be well good sometimes gab will just message me saying put it on the list and I'm like, alrighty. I, I say the title though. He does, I don't just like use my mind. Well, then what I love then is when you give me the movie, I then I've I've got a giant list of movies that I would like us to cover. So I just have to pair that up with something then that that works well with it. And then yeah. I then I look forward to writing the episode with all the bits and bobs that go with it. But yeah, so patron. So yeah, there we go. And big, the last thing you'll get if you're a patron is me reading out the names of patrons at the end of ep- every episode. So I'm going to do that now in my best zombie voice, if that's all right, Gav. <laughs> so thank you very much to all of our patrons starting with Dante Don Collier Matthew Godley Jamie Jenkins <laughs> your face when I'm doing this Kevin S Five. I'm trying to channel the zombies on Brain Dead and how like his mum talks <laughs> okay. um, Sarah Kay yeah. Rachel yeah. RJ McQuady yeah. and finally Lex Boo. very good uh, uh, thank you so much guys uh, we appreciate it immensely we love yes. doing this for you we love it we love it we love it we love it and I we love do. getting together with my buddy Gav and talking about absolute shite I know um, A team came up at least twice in this love it well in that case it's time to say goodbye so I'm going to start with it's a good good night from B.A. Baracus it's a good night from Dandy (laughs) it's a good night from Gavatron (laughs) and it's a good night from P.D.D. oh it fucking is (laughs) close those curtains Diddy mic drop forever not that not that you've done anything you might be fine we ain't going nowhere did he do it we don't know. Every step I take. Yes, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No money, no problems, Gav. Yeah. He, but when he has got no money, he'd probably have problems. Yeah. But there we go. So it's a good night from all of them. And it's a good night from some African zombies and some Indian zombies. I still Remember? want to watch the Mr. T soap opera. It's just a sitcom. What's it going to be called? Don't mess with me, fool. I don't know. Just them living in a house together. Yeah. just Faces face always bring in different girls no, home. No, f- yeah, that and Faces always in the bathroom. What's he doing? We don't know. Murdoch's always doing something crazy. Yeah, it's just annoying BA. Murdoch's a chef as well. BA- Murdoch's, like, Murdoch's like Slimer in the Ghostbusters cartoon. He's just always winding up BA, eating all the food. What's Hannibal doing? Hannibal has always got a new acting gig, so he's always turning up in a new outfit. You know, like Joey on Friends. Every time he's just in a costume. Yeah, he's in a different costume. What well, I'm, oh, I'm being a vampire today. All oh, right, okay. I okay. love that in the A Team that Hannibal was an actor because at the beginning he's in the lizard outfit. It wasn't really like that, that spectacular acting then, was it? Was he trying to keep it under wraps and no one knew who he was? So he's doing yeah, things of course. like that. He's All a right. wanted man by the government, of course. So he the does that is, on the side. He's an actor. When is he? Was he have an agent? Do you know what I mean? The thing is, if you were a wanted man, right? Yeah. 
and you were Mr. T, you were Bia Barakas, you would probably change your hair and not wear all that gold because you stand out quite a lot. You're a huge black man with a, a, a mohawk and lots of gold jewellery. Have you There's seen... There's only one of you in America. <laughs> yes. There's only one of you. So did Murdoch, and he'd spend his days in the sort of the, uh, uh, the, the psychiatric hospital... A lot of the times they had to break yeah. him out of there. Yeah. Not so every he's, episode. But presumably but he's, he's there. there most of the time. So, BA, let's presume he works in a car garage. Maybe, yeah. I'd what does say BA so. do, I wonder? I would say he works in a car garage. I think he, he's more into like coaching kids and stuff. He's always like helping groups Football of kids stuff. out. Yeah, and stuff. So his yeah. cartoons are like that. I used to like his cartoons. Yeah, Mr. T, yeah. yeah. And then, obviously, Hannibal's an actor and Face is just going around being a player. Yeah, he was a con man, wasn't he? He was like... He was always me. Yeah. He had little hustles going on, then he, and then he, he'd always hook up with chicks as well. Yeah, totally. Well, it's a good night from me, team, and it's a good night from Face Man. <sighs> yep. Bye bye. Bye bye.